Hey everybody, happy Friday. Happy Friday. It's a beautiful Friday too. There's so many exciting things going on and so many things we're going to talk about tonight. It's freezing outside. Yeah, it has been kind of cold today. You look beautiful by the way tonight. Thank you. Look, you combed your hair and everything. I did. And then you show up in a dirty jacket. <laughs> you know, isn't that funny how you give somebody a compliment? You say, man, you look beautiful tonight. And, and most people, you know, basic human psychology would say you would reply with me. You look nice tonight too. Not you. But you came to work in your work clothes. <laughs> I just got up here. All right, anyway, let's get some hellos tonight. Uh, Banquet of Consequences was first in the house. Good evening to you. Hey, Skeins girl, I hope you're hanging in there okay. Helen, good evening to you. Greatest name on the internet. Half a lot fun. Is in the house tonight. Um, did I say that already? Yep, I already said that one. Songs of Joy, good evening to you. It is a great night. Let's go down here, Farm Ranch Homestead. Welcome in. Let me see here. One step closer. How are you, my friend? Aljo, good evening. Gypsy19, we have a royalty in the house. Everyone should feel very blessed by this. Let me see here. Silver Lining, how are you? Hello, hello. Uh, Vicky Poland, good evening from Texas. Gizmo, good evening to you. <laughs> Midwest Ribeye, welcome. Love Runs Rampant. Hello, one more rock. Welcome back. Miss Minky, did I say that right? I think that's how you'd say that. We've gone over. <laughs> I know, right? I struggle. <laughs> you just laugh because of the front, the first name. We went over that last night. I don't remember what it was. I don't remember how they said it. It was French. Jean. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I can make you laugh, pumpkin butt. Okay. Um, Indiana Mike. Welcome in. TJ from Georgia. Welcome in. Dana Green. Hello. Conserve Friends. Hello. Katie Gardner. Hello to you. Eagle Lover, Texas. Welcome. Dorothy Holloway. Welcome. Dana Green. Lisa's in the house. I am of me. I think I got to the bottom. Oh, I think we did anyway. All right, cool. So me and my dirty jacket. What do you got for tonight? You want to talk about? Um been busy working in the garden got eight rows of potatoes planted not me personally <laughs> but right. uh, i had help got eight rows of potatoes planted everybody brought their potatoes and we stuck them all in the ground mm -hmm. ended up with eight rows so and i put mine in a little bit uh crowded so i'll have to go back through and <laughs> tend to that um, but spring break. Yeah. Well, but you got spring break for all the schools around here. So that means, you know, spring is coming. It's time to plant and get things. Hey, Croft 54. Good evening. TB. Good evening. Tom Shivel. Good evening. Um, Drummondson live. Welcome back. Says the January 6th insurrection was a bunch of unarmed trespassing mm -hmm. tourists. Yeah, I know. No, wrong one. Radio made easy. Good evening to you. Is hello. Free people. Hello. The beautiful MJ from Wisconsin is in the house. I'm cut up again. Hello. Wally. So you did your garden and we had, uh, she had two um, people from the community come over and they planted potatoes pretty much is what you guys did, right? Yes. And you're working again on Sunday, right? Yes. And you guys are putting in what? Roots and brassicas, hmm. hopefully. But there's a lot of roots and a lot of brassicas. So okay. do you want to elaborate on it There's three of us. Well, I mean, one, I was like, what would you like to one lady? I was like, what would you like to plant? And she's like, I will eat anything. So I'm like, okay, well, that's a whole lot easier than, <laughs> um, but you know, it's time to get like, yeah, it's time. A lot of stuff started if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. The weather looks decent the, the rest of the way out. Um, we'll still have some cold nights, but, uh, today so, was kind of the coldest of yeah. that it's been in a while. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be back in the 70s this week, so yep. uh, high, high 60s, yep. low 70s, I think. Yep. Carrie Davis, good evening to you. So that will be that will be helpful to plant. Yep. Um, something else I got, uh, I found homes for 12 of my turkeys that yep. were a year old. So uh, six went to one house, uh, five girls and a boy went to one house. And then another house got um, four to keep and then two to butcher. For you. For me. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we bartered um, a bunch of turkeys away inside the community. So all of them stayed in our beautiful community. Yeah. And so they'll go on to help benefit, um, you know, other community members. And uh, so we're super excited about that. I'm super butcher. And I, I heard back from um, Pip and she said that everything seemed to be fine. The birds took to their new house and mm -hmm. were just fine. So yeah. easy. Welcome. Um, that will give me the opportunity to clean out the the turkey pens mm -hmm. for the next go round. I've got 30 chickens coming um, the 25th, March 25th mm -hmm. or that week yep. or weekend. There's, there's like a three to five days yeah. that they give you. So yeah. are you ready for them? I'm getting ready for them. Yep. So we have not started incubating eggs yet, even though typically we would have already, but it's because she's got a batch coming of a particular breed that we decided we were going to go buy some of. So that's why we haven't done it yet, but we'll start hatching again pretty quick or incubating a bit pretty quick. Yeah. Right. Um, well, I don't know. I mean, cause you want to continue, you want to go to a one kind of breed then. Yeah. But that's really a next year issue, right? We still got to get through this year. So I still want to grow some roosters to eat them and I still want to go through some of that. Okay. And then, and then what will happen is there'll so, come a time where we'll get rid of all the A layers and we'll, you know, some other member in the community will get blessed with all of them. And then we can make that switch, but I don't think we're quite ready to do so that. So you yet. want to go ahead and do more barnyard mix. Yeah. And then when it comes like time. later, when, when the Sussex or adults go yes. ahead and make the switch. switch them out. Yeah. Make the switch. Okay. I yeah. guess I didn't know that you yeah. wanted to continue on with the, yeah, it's a management thing. Terminator, Terminator, good evening to you and unique prepping. Welcome back, Zach. And I'm ready for um, the the chicks. So yeah. that will. And then, yeah. so I need to, then if that's the, if you want me to mm -hmm. incubate, then I will wait after I get them, I'll wait 21 days and mm -hmm. then start incubating so that there's. A, you got three brooders now. I do, but baby pens, mm -hmm. when the baby, when the, when the chicks are hatched, you can't just throw everybody in the same mm -hmm. run. You got to keep like these clutched together. Yeah. yeah but remember you, you, you freed up one of the turkey runs, right? So you've got some other, you I got, guess I do have yeah, three you got if some I options. use that. So yeah, you got some options. We are going to be full of birds. Yep. Justine Stanley. Good evening to you. Hilltop home place. Good evening as well. Yeah. Kelly, Kelly, Ireland. What's it going on? Technically then I could probably go ahead and start. Yep, Gizmo wants to know from you. What what breed are you going to switch to? Mm -hmm. The speckled Sussex. Mm -hmm. Yep, and they're already Chickens. coming. I've already taken care of it. Um, Mainly because they were better foragers yes. than... Yeah, we talked about this a lot on the last live that I think because of the way the world is going and that we have to figure out ways to transition between homesteading and freesteading, right? And so... To me, that's like one of the differences there is that what I'm looking for ultimately is what we're, what we're learning to look for in birds is same with our turkeys is we want good egg layers. We want good meat birds. We want all of that, but I also mothers. want the good mothers, but I want them to be able to take care of themselves as much as possible, require the least amount of input from us. And so we were searching for good egg layers, good moms, good meat birds. But at the same time, the most important thing was how well did they go out there and forage? We have a couple of birds right now that when I let them out, they immediately run off into the woods to like find mm, food right. and then there's some that just sit around that and not sit around fed. but they walk around like where i'm at like hey what do you got let me let me have some food like the easy easy button yep. psalms 144 good evening to you and hakes raw 54 says enjoyed the video on landscaping for the community center yeah and this sunday on the community center we're going to be putting in all the plumbing for that will go underneath the slab all the water lines and all of that kind of stuff you're not doing that on sunday are you sunday they get here on Sunday. Yeah, that's the plan is to start on on Sunday. Okay. So um, anyway, so I'm super looking forward to that. So I'll shoot a video on that as well. So you guys can kind of see how that all goes. Yeah, because you're doing it different this time, right? Yes, I'm doing it different this time. Unique Prepping says, hey, Tag and B, I'll email you probably tomorrow. I'm sending you a gift. Oh, how cool. Yep, super cool. I was thinking about him while he, we were planting our potatoes. Yeah, Banquet says that. Uh, after last night's State of the Union, the heat is turning up. I'm going to talk a lot about this tonight, but you're 100 percent correct. That was last night. The State yes. of the Union yeah. address was last night. 
Yeah, that's funny. I didn't uh, even hear about that. Yeah, beyond the potato show, January uh, employment revisited. First report was 353,000, revised to 229,000. They were only off by 61,000. Yeah, you can't. Here's the thing, guys. You cannot, you absolutely cannot take anything that's being fed to us by media, at any source of media, right, as any kind of fact. They're, they're manipulating every single number out there, and they're doing it on purpose, and nothing that we're being told is true. Nothing, not a single thing. Yep, Lover on Dramp, it says, we are replacing fence on our suburban homestead. What kind of fence do you think is best for securing a house in a suburban neighborhood, not planning on being here forever, but doing what we can now? Yeah, so I think when it comes to um, fencing, I think what you really have to determine is what's the goal, right? And so here's the great thing about a fence. It's not really designed to keep anybody out. You know, it, sometimes people build fence to keep animals in, but a human's going to get over a fence. The question is, can you just slow them down enough for you to be able to react? Can you buy yourself a little bit of time? And so I would think of my fence in terms of how do I buy myself a little bit of time, one. And the other thing is in a suburban area, how do I keep the eyes out? So if, like if I was in a suburban area, I'd be more concerned about a solid wood, fence. Wood fence instead just, of a metal. well, or or a chain link fence with the ribbons that are in it. Just make it hard to see what you're gardening and hard to see some of those kind of things, which I think makes makes you less less of a target. Um, mm -hmm. There is a saying around our community, which is big fences and tall trees. And you know what that means is we just want to keep the eyes out. But here I'm more concerned with keeping animals in and slowing them down as people seeing in because I've got enough land. You can't see my house from the road anyway. Um, so that doesn't matter as much to me, yeah. but I hope that helps, you know, but anyway, I didn't mean to cut you off. Babe. I don't remember what I was saying. Yeah. Cheryl Seller says, don't get me started with the state of the union. <laughs> yeah. I'm a, I, I quoted, I took some of his quotes that we're going to talk about later that I found interesting, mm. but um, um, so I'll go. So tomorrow um, I'm going to go to an Saturday. auction. Yep. Saturday's auction day here. And um, I'm super excited, but I'm like, super excited for a lot of other reasons too, not just the auction. Um, the big thing I'm excited about is we have a lot of community around right now. And, um, you know, we have a lot of families who own land here, but still live in other places and they're working to get themselves here. They're working to build here. They're working to do all of those things. But we're going to have a whole bunch of them here. So we have all kinds of community stuff going, um, which I'm super, super excited about. Hey, Jules, welcome. Um, but all of them, not all of them, a whole bunch of them will be at the auction with me. So um, we get to go and do that. But what I thought I would do, if, if um, you guys don't mind, is I'm going to share with you some of the things um, that we're interested interested at in the auction. We went there tonight and looked around a little bit um, just prior to this uh, live tonight. And so I thought I'd share some things with you that I had on my on my plate to look at. So the, the blue thing, that is a mobile um, feed cart. And what this would allow us to do is the amount of feed we buy per year. Again, we're trying to shrink that, that amount. But this would allow her to store it in bulk. And that's a, really important to us because fewer times, fewer dependencies, and I can make it a little while longer. Um, yeah, One Step Closer says, uh, man, I'm missing an auction. The last one was so much fun. Yes, it was. We get them all the time down here. The next one will be in April. But um, then the middle one's a propane tank. I'm still looking for a propane tank for the uh, community building. I bought one already, and then <laughs> I shipped it away to have it rebuilt. And they said it was too old. They couldn't rebuild it. So now what do you do with it, right? Um, so I'm still looking for a propane tank. And um, that picture on the right is of a dingo. There's two of them side by side. The only way I'll buy these is if I steal them super cheap because, as you guys know, B just got a tractor. So, But this will help clean stalls out with smaller doors. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, it used to be where I would get heat about buying equipment. Now I've got the, you know, <laughs> now, you know, off we go. Instigators in the house. Good evening to you, as is country for sure. Um, Glenn Forner's here too. Rock on. But yeah, so anyways, so that's, that's the first three items that were, um, I thought were pretty interesting to look at. Um, this picture, the first picture is a 24 inch auger, but I already have the auger, but what this would allow me to do is make trees, you know, a little bit quicker. Um, bury trees a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just make it go quicker. The middle one is probably the thing I'm the most interested in. And this is a stump bucket but you can use it for a lot more things. You can use it for trenching. You can that's use supposed it. to be a stump bucket. That's that's what's actually what that is. Yeah. So you're supposed to dig a stump out with that. Yeah. So a tree stump. So after you cut a tree off, that's actually what that's meant to do is dig out a stump to remove a stump out of the ground. I'll use How it is for... that any different than a bucket, like a regular bucket? 
You could use the corner of a regular bucket. Well, too. but babe, the, that bucket's a lot bigger. What this is putting is all the force that skid loader can muster on those three teeth. Right. It's just going to be way more efficient at it. Hmm. Um, I thought that was for digging trenches. Well, no, it's actually for stumps. I'll just use it for digging trenches. Well, yeah, I hands. thought that. Yeah. Love runs ramp said we have many blackberries to propagate. Um, so thanks farm ranch homestead. Yeah. I love that. We just did a whole bunch you can of do black the blackberries on the new fence then. Yeah. Yeah. Instigator says an unrepairable propane tank, heck of a barbecue. Yes, it is. Yeah. Didn't somebody I say they were going to do that with it? Yeah. You were going to yeah. donate it. Somewhere. Yeah. So um, in our community, we have a, a guy who spent his whole life welding and I asked him if he would take the old propane tank and make us a grill for the community building. Um, and so we'll work on that. Pockerty says stump bucket stumped how to use it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right, next picture here is the last three. I think that's the last three I have. So the fishing poles I'm not interested in, but I, I like that big metal cauldron. Cauldron, yeah. And you can see the little little uh, ends on it that I could build a little stand for, little right? Handles. Yeah, but I just think it's cool. I probably won't buy it, but it's pretty cool. Middle picture is just some more chain link. As you guys know, I collect chain link. I have a ton of it, but I have uses for it down the road. And the third picture is a whole bunch of brand new windows there. Yeah, they're like Anderson windows. Yeah. They're yeah, I think there's some community members who are interested in them. So I will kind of back off unless there's something left over for me. But um, yeah, we wouldn't need very many yeah, for no. the community building. Is that what you're thinking about? Yeah. Yeah. How, there, how many? There were seven or eight or yeah. ten yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. But I want to make sure if if somebody else in the community can use them for their house. Yeah. Then that's fine. Right. We'll, we'll make do. But um, if I can get them, if there's any left over or nobody wants them, I'll, I might make a run at them just because. You know, you got to make $1 too, right? And we'd like a window in there. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. We're going to get a few windows for sure. Yeah. Farm uh, Ranch Homestead said those windows could be useful in building a greenhouse. You know, I've got, if any anybody around us has any um, interest, I've got like 93 foot by three foot window panes. And it's not, it's, it's the window and the wood frame. It's not the casing that goes around the window. It's just the window and the wood frame. They've been on a pallet um, forever. But I um, mean, I just saved them thinking someone they're would triple paint. They're triple glass. They're tri triple, yep, triple, triple pane. pane glass. And I just saved them because I figured someone was going to use them sometime, you know, and they've been yeah. sitting on a pallet now for two years back there. I got them for free. Um, but super exciting. They'd be a great greenhouse. Yep. Jewel says she needs windows when she built a house. Yeah. Windows are helpful. In in a house. Yeah. But I'm super excited. There's many other things at the auction that I'll make runs at. There's some hedge posts. There's some, you know, scrap metal. It all just comes down to whether or not um, I can get it cheap enough, you know, and make it worth it um, for me to, you know, use that capital in those places at that time. Yeah. Right. Because I've got a lot going on right now. Well, it's, not, it's not just that, babe. We've got a community building going up that needs my resources. Yes. We've got a lot of things that are, um, you know, that are just going to take some resources this year to get finished up and that. So I want to be careful, but at the same time, if I can steal something like that, you know, get a really, really, really good deal on it. Then, um, and we're going to talk about some really good deals that we got, um, here recently, but, uh, yeah, farm ranch says if I was close, I'd love those windows. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's funny that I've learned about they're auctions. Huge too. They're, they're big. Yeah. One of the things I love about auctions is not so much even the auction, but it's turned into a social event. <laughs> It is. <laughs> you know, I think that's crazy, but, you know, me and the buddies, we, you know, we hang out and um, you stand in line and then we, we, you know, uh, plot together. You work on that line. I'll work on this line. I'm interested in this. You're what interested do you do in this. when you both want the same item? Um, usually I just back off, you know, and whatever. I don't, I don't even worry about it, you know, but um, let me see here. Yeah, Hakesraw 54 says those triple pane windows would be great for a solar heater. Yeah. Um, so Psalm 144 says, not sure where you live, but planting Bougainvillea and cactuses along the fence line will help to keep people from jumping over and also from peeping in as well. Yeah, that's good advice. Yeah, we couldn't grow that here, but let me see here. Tag, I close on my property on Monday. I can't get an address assigned until there's a structure on the property or at least a building permit. I grew up at auctions with my grandfather, uh, the instigator says quit when I realized most of them were farmers going out of business, not by choice, hurt my heart. Yeah, it is what it is. I mean, you know, and I, there's all kinds of stuff that happens and, you know, they're putting the, the, the grips on farmers. But again, if I can help, um, you know, our community grow and foster. And if, again, if it's making $1 too, like I always talk about, you know, over and over and over again, and this, 
trying to build a, a completely off grid homestead with its own infrastructure, with its, you know, own systems. And that is just super expensive, you know? And so uh, we got to, you know, take all of it that we can take. Right. Yes. Yep. Wherever we can. Yep. All right. New topic. What do you got next for you? And then I'll... Um, not that one. We got, did you hear that? Um, was it Lake Tahoe? Yeah. Got seven feet of snow. Yeah. And, and this it, is, and my uncle, he got a foot, 12 inches. And there were 17 inches in Nebraska yesterday. 17 inches? 17 inches. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Star, we welcome. We got lots of precipitation coming yep. down. Drummond's and Live says, can you get a building permit without an address? Yeah, I, I can. I did it here um, where she's talking about, um, I don't know that county um, rules, but here, here you absolutely can. And in fact, they don't issue the actual address until the septic goes in. Mm. Yeah. Hey, Johnny, welcome. So if you don't put a septic in, you don't get an address? Um, you can have a building on a parcel of land, like a shop, and not ever have an address. Oh, okay. And not have a bathroom yeah. either. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. It really just kind of of barns. comes into the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about the next thing. So this was big, you guys. So what you're looking at is solar panels. You're looking at pallets of them. And um, I had run into a deal uh, a little while ago, 10 days ago or whatever it was, on 565 watt bifacial solar panels. Okay. And it was a good deal. And I don't really need them. But um, it was, you know, 30 cents on the dollar. And they're brand new. They're still in the pallet. And so I put out a message to the community around here and said, hey, listen, um, I got this deal on these if anybody is interested. And so the community got together and used our community buying power. And this is, I talked about this before, but this is a really important thing. With the community, you can get much better deals because of the buying power. So I found out what everyone was interested in. And in the end, it ended up being 186 solar panels. And so that's, that's a big buy. And so I got them to move the price down even more. I got to the uh, freight down a little bit. And um, anyway, so tomorrow showing up at my house is um, 105,000 watts of solar panels. <laughs> 105,000 watts of solar panels. Now they're going to get distributed. Like I'm only keeping 10 personally. For the community it, building. And I'm going to put it on the community building. And then I had another community member donate a couple more to go on the community building. So we've already got 12. But um, I was just amazed that how that all works. And um, yeah, it was just insane that we would get. Too bad you didn't put the picture of the truck. Um, I probably can. Yeah. So the guy got these and then put them on Facebook, right? Is that where you found them? Facebook marketplace? That's where I originally found them. Yeah. And then um, he had a truckload or something come in. So you got with him and ordered six pallets, right? Um, six pallets. Yep. And they were supposed to be here on Tuesday. And we got a, I'm a text message today saying, they are loaded up and they're on their way. They'll be here tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so, of course, it's the one day that he has an auction that he's like, I am not missing this auction. Mm -hmm. and, you're right. And I'm going to be at the auction. You're going to be and, home. And um, that seems like that happens often, actually. Uh, let me hear. Let me save it. Hold, keep keep so, talking, baby. And I'll, I'll get that a picture of that. And these panels are like, what, eight feet long? They're 83 inches long. Yeah. 61 pounds a piece. Yeah. Yeah. So they're super, super big. They're big. Yep. But they're like four by eight. Yep. If it, hey, by the way, if anyone wants to look at that last auction, it's Hoffman Auction in Effingham, Kansas. That's where we'll be going. But, um, okay, where's this at? I'm getting it, baby. Yeah. There we go. Yep. So we contacted another community member and said, Hey, is there any way you have your skid loader available? Hopefully you're feeling better. You can come over and help unload six pallets of solar panels while ready. Go shopping. <laughs> yep. So I will be here. Okay. It's moving. Here we go. I think I should probably move that trailer out so that we can get to that trailer a little easier. Okay, let me see here. I'm going to share my screen you guys real quick. She wants me to show you guys this uh, truck that left today because it's pretty cool. 
You are so fast at all that. Yeah. So there's the truck. That that's one. a big trailer. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of solar panels. Pretty cool though, huh? This shouldn't be very heavy, right? Mm. It's not like the not like the concrete board that we bought. Um, so each pallet's twenty one hundred pounds. Okay. Um, let me see here. Where are we at? Sorry, guys. I'm way behind on my comments. Um, time tomorrow. I'm working on. I don't know yet. Um, but I think I've got it worked out. Okay. As far as we'll be able to get it done. Hey, Amy B. Welcome. Tambra, welcome. But if you bought solar panels, you need to come get them. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, Gregory, welcome as well. Yeah. And the reason why you got to come get them, because I do not have the ability to store those indoors. So they're going to sit outside until if you ordered panels. But they sit outside. I mean, ours are outside. I understand. I'm just telling you, they're going to sit outside. So, you know, that's just what that is, right? Yeah. So. They're going to get wet. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Oh. And these solar panels are what? Bifaced? Bifacial. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah, and Jules says, wowza, that's a lot of solar panels. That's a lot of solar panels. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see here. Oh, my God, looks like the spread of tires would break some. Yeah, it's it's just a lot. I'm super excited, though, because I, I you guys know this. I own part of a solar company. I couldn't buy them for this. I mean, for, for what I found. And so it benefits everybody. Hello, all. I was watching the... Idiot rod and noticed what time it was. Oh, the idea rod. Sorry, that's a race. Hey, Nitos, welcome. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I thought you guys would find that pretty cool. Um, I think it's amazing when a community can come together and buy things. So guys, this we you guys have seen us do it a lot of times. We bought a bunch of siding once. We, you know, but together, I think we can accomplish a whole bunch of things if we just apply our energy to spending our money inside um, to helping each other out versus going, you know, elsewhere. Yeah. Which I think yeah. is, you know, pretty neat. Yeah. Um, Did you, how many, is there 10 people that bought those? I don't know. I didn't, you didn't count, count them. I didn't count them. I just put the message out and and that's what we ended up with. And so I got them shipped, which I can still get more, by the way. Right. I mean, this. Uh, but you have to buy a pallet load I just, at a time. You got to buy them 31 at a time. Yep. That's right. Um, So it's super, super cool. And they came out of Texas. Yep. Yep. They're somewhere between Texas and here right now. And then they're going to show up and I'm not going to be here. So guess what? She has to deal with it. <laughs> Lucky you, kind right? Kind of. I mean, I can't take those off of there with my tractor, you, so we no. have to have somebody else do it. You can supervise. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't need me supervising. <laughs> I just get in the yeah. way. Yeah. All right. Um, so next, next picture. So, guys, remember I've been working on my shower in my master bedroom. So this is after it's been grouted. Last picture I showed you guys, we didn't have the grout in yet. And so, as you can see, the last thing um, I have to do is to do the floor. So, we'll clean the, once she gets in there, so B does all the grouting. She'll get in there and she'll grout it all. It's already been grouted once. And just then, the shower. Just the shower. And then she'll grout it one more time. Then I'll put the floor in. She'll grout that. We'll clean it up and I'll get out of there and I'll get on to the, um, on to the next step. Hake Shaw says, community shopping helps starve the beast. Yes, it does. And it's just a beautiful thing. And I love being able to see everybody winning right and i tell people this all the time inside the community i am not in competition with anybody in my community and in fact um i want them to win right <laughs> i mean well, I, want, yeah. I want them to be successful so it's you know I, we should never compare ourselves to somebody else because we're all at a different place in our journey but i want them to win too and it, it brings me great joy that um we get to win together um, what is the cost to ship those panels from Texas to your area? It actually was super, super reasonable to get that whole truck delivered to me was twelve hundred bucks. Just the ship. I thought it was fourteen. Was it fourteen? I thought it was twelve something. Whatever it was. Wasn't much money. I didn't think to have that whole load um delivered up there. But conserve friend says nice bathroom. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty cool. It's got uh, two shower heads in it. They all operate individually, um, which I like. And um, again, just this is pod four and we're just making ground. I'm, I'm getting closer on the um, closet too, right? So we'll be able to. Yeah, grout. I had to kick him out of the bathroom so that I could grout. I wanted to grout the ceiling before he like installed the cabinetry. And I was like, please go work on something else. And he's like, nope, I'm right here. I've got everything why out. Why Tile's already why out. Why don't you share with these beautiful people what your idea is for the shelving behind the toilet? 
because you had a whopper of an idea that I thought, man, that is some really smart stuff. The shelving behind the toilet. Yeah. I don't know, to put the pebbles in the... No. No, for your Skeletor collection. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I didn't say Skeletor. <laughs> she, she, I think that you she have Skeletor on your brain. <laughs> And you were like, I wanted that Skeletor uh, figurine. Yeah, yeah. It was like she told me she wanted a place to display her Skeletor collection. Explain. Because, Explain. And nothing in your head said she doesn't have a Skeletor. <laughs> <laughs> like, did you really thought I said that? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, no, so I what did you mean? Because I what I heard. Skull. Was, so you wanted to? Okay. So this gets even better. Skull. So she wants to to house a skull collection in the bathroom did i get that why right why does it matter if it's in the bathroom or if it's in the bedroom or if it's in the kitchen or the living room they're freaking yeah. skulls yeah so you guys just learned something about b right apparently she has somewhere she has a skull collection i've never seen it but that's not you've got a skull right there <laughs> oh the skulls can only come from your family <laughs> okay, is I got that you. okay? Hey, anti. Uh, He's like hey, Jack. What's up? Only dead animals I'm gonna show in you this guys house come about. from my family. No dead animals from your family. And technically, it wasn't from my family. I found it on the farm. This is what she's talking about. So this is like this is something <laughs> that we should have in the kitchen instead. Maybe on the headboard. <laughs> Because they do not go in the bathroom. Yeah, there's there's some great questions coming in here, um, babe, that I think you really need to uh, answer. So Amy B says, will the shelving hold an abundance of squash? <laughs> not this shelf. This one's in the bathroom. Yeah, or will it hold cinnamon rolls? <laughs> well, Amy, come on. Cinnamon rolls in the bathroom are certainly not as odd as skulls. I think it's more odd, actually, for cinnamon rolls. Well, look at this. Unique Prepping says, uh, by the way, Tag and B, I won this week by Jules' help. I have a prepping company supporting my channel. Hey, pretty cool. Amy B wants to know, human or animal schools? They're, they're, they're animals. <laughs> you almost I said almost human. I almost said human. <laughs> human. <laughs> no, I, it's like a deer. There was yeah. like a deer. It's like a little one. Yeah, Jeremy wants to know uh how many skulls do you need to qualify it as a collection? <laughs> I think more than one. Skeletor! <laughs> yeah, he's like, you want a Skeletor collection? <laughs> Not Skeletor. Why would you think I said Skeletor? <laughs> he's like, well, yep. what did you say? Skeletons? Yep. Yep. Gregory says a wild boar soap dispenser. <laughs> <laughs> You like you pull the mouth open, there's like soap in there. Yep. <laughs> oh, look at that, Danny and Wanda. Tag, if you keep it up, it's going to be yours. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, I'm assuming we're talking to Wanda. B and I were just talking about you guys this morning. I hope everything is great with you. You guys, anybody who is not subscribed. To Deep South Homestead, you guys need to go over there. That is a great channel with great people. They're honest. They got integrity. Um, and the person. Yeah, we need we need to do a video again sometime soon, Wanda. Yeah, they have yeah. lots of great information over there. Yep. Half bubble off. Plum says, "Be the bone collector." See, you guys learned some new stuff about her and her Skeletor collection. Well, you don't want to throw them away. Yep. Yep. Skulls with light up eyes that move. <laughs> oh, it's Danny. Hey, Danny. I hope everything is great with you guys. Again, you guys, anybody who's not, go over there and check them out. Amazing channel. I've learned so much from them. B has learned so much from them. Just absolutely amazing people. Um, you know, they've done me um, some incredible favors in my life. I didn't even know it. And just good, honest people. Just just can't say enough about them. Um, Amy B says, and they have the coolest cows at Deep South. They have the coolest a lot of things at Deep South. <laughs> A lot of things. Yep. Yep. Deep South says hello, all of our friends. Yeah, there's a lot of people in here, I bet, that watch your guys' lives and do that stuff with you guys, Danny. Yeah. Super great to hear from you. Again, B and I was just talking about you guys the other day. I'll send you an email, but we should get together again sometime soon. I'd love to catch up. All right. All right, B, what you got next? What's on your list? Well, not skulls. Skeletor collection. Can you, um, can you believe she said Skeletor collection? I said skeleton. 
skulls. I said skulls, <laughs> skulls. Um, well, we've got a dinner coming up with all of the people that are in town. Oh, yes. This is a big deal, actually. And look at all yeah. that love for Danny and Wanda. Danny and Wanda. Amy B says, I got rabbits because of Danny and Wanda. Dana Green says, I watch them and love them. Yep. Cheryl says, I love porch time. Yeah. Vicki Pullen wants to know if you have a He-Man and a She-Ra collection to go with your Skeletor collection. <laughs> nope. Check out Pecan Grove also. I am not familiar with that. Mm -mm, I'm not. Yep. Of Glenn says, greetings, Danny. Super smart guy. Justine says, yes, a video with Danny and Wanda would be great. We'll we'll do that. If Danny's up for it, I'm up for it. Yeah, we've done a few in the past, but it has been a long time. We have not caught up in a long time. Life just gets in the way, you know? Yeah. Starla says, I found life done three through Deep South. Yep. Yep. I call Danny a real man. Great people. Absolutely great people. Deep South says, Con Grove is our new channel. I didn't know that. Oh. Where, where have I been? Well, I wrote it down. Oh, did you? Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Danny, as soon as I'm done with this live, we'll go over there and subscribe. Yeah, you're getting lots of love in here. Pretty cool. I did not know that. Oh, it's because I knew you got the new property. Yep, super cool. Love that. Okay, so Pecan Grove is their new channel. Oh, there you go. Here, I'll put that up. There you go. Thank you, Jules. There's a new channel. Let's make sure everybody goes over there and shows them some love. Again, good people. Their heart's in the right place. They're doing it for the right reasons. And uh, I just can't can't say enough. Pecan. 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 Yeah, yeah, there we go again. Look at that. Beautiful. Wonderful. No, that's actually the new channel. Pretty cool. One more rock says, Pecan Grove was amazing. Watched your fence today like a warrior. <laughs> yep. Super cool. Well, guys, um, as Bethany was saying, so this week we've got a ton of community in, in the in town, not just the community that lives here, but the community who's working on being here. And so um, tell them what's going on on Tuesday. We have um, our little cafe that we frequent has open has decided to open their doors for an evening event, which mm -hmm. she's normally not open for the evening. So we're doing a she called it a taco bar, but it's like tortillas and chips. Mm -hmm. So more like burrito bar mm -hmm. um but she's doing like a buffet mm -hmm. and we have 32 rsvps mm -hmm. already so that should be a nice uh dinner yeah let, let me uh real quick to say something about that so we have a cafe for those of you guys who don't know called 1886 it's not very far from us the lady's super like, like-minded, um, front of her business, she flies the black American flag. And if any of you know what that means, it means I'm not surrendering, <laughs> um, but super like-minded. And she is opening the restaurant just for our community, which this isn't the first time she's done it. She does it yeah. whenever we want her to. She caters our events, just super like-minded. So we're all going to go get to hang out um, at 1886 and just uh, eat and laugh and joke and have fun and, um, you know, And get to see the celebrate. people that are in town yeah. that are. Yeah. Yep, super, super cool. So that's what she's referring to. Yeah. Um, and it's like super reasonable too. Yeah. You know, we go out to some of these restaurants and our bill is ridiculous. And mm -hmm. it's and she sources all the food as as most oh, yeah, of the talk food about that. as local as she can. Yeah. Like if she can find somebody to grow her potatoes, she'll buy their potatoes, you know, their eggs, their uh, produce. Yep. Her meat comes from a few different farmers here in the area. You know, pig from here, cow mm. from here, yep. chicken from here. And then, yep. you know, if they don't have any where she has like three farmers, like on backup, like yep. that she can get meat from. So it's all raised right here. Um, well, as much as she can, yep. you know, she says like, if I'd love to be able to feed everybody from right here, but if I don't have eggs i gotta go get them from somewhere yeah. so she's like if you have eggs and you want me to cook you some of your eggs then bring your eggs yes starla says is that where grumpy acre sells freeze-dried food yes she has a shelf on the wall where grumpy acre sells their freeze-dried food mm -hmm. which is super super cool so yeah. I'm, I'm excited about doing it again and uh, getting the community together again and um you know so we've got tomorrow with community at the auction Sunday, we've got with community, we're going to put the plumbing in the community building. And some will be here to help garden too. Yep. And Sunday, you'll have part of the community here to garden. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, we have community dinner, right? Yeah. 
So we got a full week. So it's really, really exciting. It's, it's great to watch the community blossom and to grow. And, um, you know, it made me smile when I realized that we bought 105,000 watts of power, <laughs> you know, that's like, that's big power, you know? Yeah. Um, so super, super cool. So that's coming up for us too. Um, what else we got? So I'm sorry, bud. It is kind of interesting how that whole the, it's spring break. So these people are coming up. They've already had plans to come up to work their land. And then this solar thing comes just at the time where mm -hmm. they're coming and they're like here the day that their panels will be delivered. It's like, yeah. it's amazing how things just fall into line where, yeah. where they're like, it's supposed to happen. Yeah. It's like, it's like fate. It's fate. Well, there, there've been a lot of things that have happened along the way that make me think that we're doing right. You know? Yeah. That, you know, windfalls or, you know, whatever it is that, you know, happens that makes you think, Hey, yeah. You know, and when that happens, it's easy to make that jump. You know, you're sitting on the line, sitting on the line, sitting on the line, sitting on the line. And then something, you know, if you mm -hmm. pay attention to those, those signs that, um, you know, you need to do something, then, then, uh, then do it. Johnny says, I wonder what it costs to have someone cook the eggs you brought with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? Um, um, we have done that in the past where, you know, we dropped off a bunch cause they needed them or whatever it was. And, and we just take it out and barter. Yeah. And that's the way I prefer to do things is just to do it by barter. Just like the turkeys, you know, we didn't take any cash. Yeah. She fed us bacon. Yeah. Yeah. The best bacon, best hash browns in the country. Um, but, um, you know, I'm not, I'm less caught up in the little individual details of, you know, is this the right value or whatever and that kind of stuff. I'm yeah. really way more interested in, you know, how do we get the community you know, up and running? How do we get ourselves self-sufficient? How do we become more free? Um, and I think if I can accomplish that, then, then, you know, my mission's done, you know? Yeah. Well, helping other people yep. is, it helps us also because if we get them, um, you know, like I, a girl, one of the girls was like, what can I do for you? And I was like, I need you to yeah. focus on you. Yeah. <laughs> Because if you yeah. focus on you yeah. and get your stuff done, then you're helping me because I don't have to spend my time helping you get your stuff done. And so she's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I'll go to my land. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to, I, you know, I don't, it's not that I don't need the help or that I don't want the help, but I think that I'll do what I can here. You do what you can there. If you need me, let me know. If I need you, I'll let you know. Yeah. But um, we all have our own things we have to get done. Yeah. And the time is so short. It is super short. Um, what do I got next? So I hear a lot about what what can I do for a living if I'm homesteading, right? And I found a picture of just something that I thought was just super, super cool. And I'm kind of doing this a little bit half jokingly, but check this out. So this guy created a mobile chicken selling van. <laughs> He's selling live chickens. <laughs> live chickens out of the back of a van. He has a line of people. Yeah. And look at that. There's people lined up to get them. And I don't know how you'd make any money doing that. But um, for those of you entrepreneurs out there who are looking for a new career, the chicken van might be for you. Might be for you. Get a van, get some chickens. Or even better, you become part of a community, have someone else raise the chickens until they get old enough to sell and then put them in the van. And you ain't got no money in inventory or anything. You just have to pay both sides once you get done. Right? Look at that. Isn't that just amazing? Your one step closer says, brilliant. Um, let me see here. Amy B says, that's hysterically cool. Now that's ingenuity. <laughs> yep. I thought that was just really a cool picture. And, um, you know, it's funny. You, you would think that. Um, it'd be hard or it'd be odd, but it really isn't. We have a, a big van that comes um, eight miles, five miles from me, um, four or five times a year selling fish where you can buy live bass, catfish, crappie, right? Um, but pretty cool. Let me see here. I have um, up to eight chickens, no roosters. I can have up to eight chickens, no roosters. Amy B says quail would be easier, more per square foot. Yeah. I think you could sell all kinds of stuff out of there, right? Um, Tamber says that she tilled a place to plant her cream peas and her corn today. Good job. Yep. Um, yeah, it is super cool. Glenn, I like it a lot. Okay. We'll show again shortly. I'm not sure. 
Okay, we'll show again shortly. Um, if the Department of Making You Sad says you can only do it on farm, cover the bottom of the van with soil from your farm. <laughs> yep. I spent the afternoon gathering up and burning all of the tumbleweeds that the last storm blew through. I had a ton. Mm. It's that time of year. Um, let me see here. Granddaughter came back from Japan on spring break and we talked about food and food prices there. We were shocked that strawberries cost $15. Yeah. Six strawberries. Six strawberries cost $15. Wow. Yeah. Greatness. I can incubate you some and I have some barred rocks if you want some. Mm-hmm. So it'd be like doing a drug deal in a grocery parking lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Carrie, it would be. But how cool is that, right? Yeah, Kelly says, oh, wow. They hey, hey, boxes to put the chickens in. That's just genius. Hey, Kra's got it. Hey, Kra's got it right. He says, once you get established homes, it doesn't take much to survive. Yeah, it's just getting that, that it's, it's getting that all of that infrastructure in and getting all of those things in. And time is short, you guys. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the time to wait is not now, you know. We started a farm stand on the front of our property, just added a little building this year, sell fruit trees, garden seeding, or organic fertilizers, uh, freeze dried food, and much more. I love this. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yep, love this. If I ever get down your way, I will definitely stop and check it out. Um, Got a Craigslist deal, thornless bla uh, barefoot blackberries for a dollar a plant, somewhere eight feet canes. That wow. ain't bad. Yeah. That ain't bad. That's a good deal. Love Red Ram says, oh, me, 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 I'll barter some honey for bar rocks. That sounds like a good deal. Honey's valuable. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see. I love autocorrect. It makes me the comedian I never was. Yeah. <laughs> yep, I can see that on my tiny homestead on wheels. Chickens on one side, catio on the other. Like for a patio for cats. Oh, a catio on the other. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Anyway, I thought you guys would enjoy that. That picture to me was just made me smile. It's ingenuity. It's entrepreneurship. Did you see that on Facebook or something? Yeah, I just seen a post. And and so what I do, you probably don't even know this. So, so through the week, if I see something that I think is interesting for the live, I just snip clip it and say that. No, mind. I did not know you. And then when I come up here to do it, I put it all together, you know, at that time. I thought you just pulled this out of your sleeve, like boop. I know. I just store There's it. a lie. Yeah. I just store it. You know, the good room is I have to store stuff in my sleeves because all of our spare room is being taken up by the Skeletor collection. Right? <laughs> yeah, Vicky says just a few hours from Belton. Yeah, and I'll be in Belton before long. So mm -hmm. I don't know when, but I will. Um, let me see here. Starla says, uh, check out your State Department of Forestry for buying fruit trees in bulk at a very good price. Yeah, Vicky said, love to have you stop by. I'd love to stop by too. Big kid, you're late, but right on time. 40, yeah, she, 48 minutes in. She says she sells trees. I wonder what kind of trees. I wonder if it's worth a Belton trip. <laughs> I'll bet you that um, she would get you your uh, list of what trees they sell, right? Because you're all she's all about fruit trees. We buy them every year and half of them die, right? Basically. Basically, yep. And then kind of, you know, off we go. It depends on who gets to them because, you know, the neighbor's like, mm -hmm. no, if I prune this, it might <laughs> die. And I'm like, then don't prune it. And then he's like, but it has to be pruned. Like, And they died. <laughs> it has to be pruned. And if you prune it, it might die. Mm -hmm. I did, That doesn't make sense. Just leave it. Mm -hmm. They did. They died. Yeah. Skane's girl says bees. I like skulls also. Yeah. You like Skeletor. Well, it, just, it wasn't one that was like all chewed up and stuff. So I found it and it was like, oh, hey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bring this home with me. You see here, Tamara says, I want a Meyer lemon. They were $64 at Woodson. Yeah, we could never grow anything like that. Yeah, we looked at a fruit cocktail tree for the front of our house and it was over $200 for one tree. And we're like, never mind. Yeah. Plant trees in the fall when dormant is better. Yeah. Yeah, we've got out in front of our house. If you guys remember where we built all that cinder blocks, those big planting boxes. I want to put some some trees that are pretty to look at, but also have you can eat. You like know, ornamental. Yeah, you know, like orna ornamental, but also serve a purpose, right? Produce yeah. food um, in there, but but not have, huge trees, little trees. 
Starla says, got to run, getting dishes ready for family who lost their home to the fires. It was good to see everyone. Yeah, let's make, let's say prayers for people out there who lost those, you know, lost things and fires and who, you know, aren't in their home tonight. But good for you, Starla. That's good karma and good karma will come back to you because of it. Yeah, Tamara says, yep. Yeah. That's what I said, too high. Oh, look at this. Here you go. Vicky says, I have improved Meyer lemons three gallon for 55 bucks. That is not a bad deal. Everybody get that? And you guys can find um, Vicky Pullman in freesteading under Sunshine Kid. If you go over there, you can make direct contact with her if you'd like. Farmer says, you could probably have a lemon tree if you keep it indoors in the winter. Yeah, that's exactly the point. I don't want to keep it indoors in the winter because I already have 16 avocado trees and my wife likes to grow all kinds of Did you of see stuff. my fig has a fig on Your it? Your fig has a fig in my living room. I love that. Yeah, fig has a fig. I thought that they had to be pollinated like at that time in order to have a fruit because that's what I was told. And there's no way that it was like, you know, pollinated yeah. right now. But yeah. I've got a fruit. Yeah. Yeah, 500 plus structures in our area. So sad. Yeah, it's super sad. Yes. Yep. I didn't even know Good about night, the fire until you told me about it. Yeah, you don't get out much. Mm -mm. No. Nope. I don't get out. All right. Well, ready for the next topic? Sure. All right, guys. So we have an announcement to make. We're going to do something coming up here pretty quick that we have never done before. Never. That has never been done that I'm aware of, at least certainly for us before. And so we have been asked if we would do a live on Saturday at 3 p.m. from the stage of the Midwest Preparedness Festival. And so this, this just got sent out. So on May the 11th at 3 p.m., we're actually going to do a live with you guys on Saturday. And it won't be like our normal live where we sit here and I talk about, you know, current events or the things that we've got going on. But what it will be is I think I'm going to do my best to bring as many community members up on stage with me at, while we're doing it and talk a little bit about why they did it and community and you know their hurdles and because you guys hear from me right all the time and but there's many many more people behind the scenes you know this is not my community and i'm not what makes it run what makes it run is everybody right i'm just one person you guys just see me on camera but um so i'm going to try to bring up community members from our area and just have a conversation with them about you know again why they did it and what community means to them and what lessons are they learning you know, kind of along the way. And so I'm super, super excited about this and uh, we'll see how it goes. But uh, so this is the breaking news for the evening. So we will not be doing a Friday night that night. Yeah. So Friday, May the 10th, we will not be doing a live. Right. And I won't be able to, cause I'll be out at the festival anyway. Yeah. So let me see here. Vicki says uh, the Texas citrus industry is still suffering from the freeze two years ago. So citrus is very expensive. I have three ground fruit trees for $38. Yeah, I like that. You know, Jewel says she can't wait. Let me see here. Learn how to graft trees, B. It's not hard. David the Good has some videos on it. And we actually yeah. got some rootstock that she's got started out there. Um, apple rootstock, right? Is that what it was? Pear. It was a pear? Okay. Um, will the event be live streamed on the participants' channel? So it'll be live streamed on my channel, Johnny. Um, I don't know who else is going to live stream it, although I would welcome anybody to live stream it if they want to. Um, I don't care. Um, but it's going to be an absolute awesome live because, again, we're going to actually talk community with community and why community matters and how it came together. And I'll even ask them how they got here and what their story is, because everybody's story is a little bit different on what got them to the place that we're at. And why they do it. Yep. Yep. Glenn says that's going to be an awesome live. It is. Cool. Yep. Conserve Friends says Spring Festival, what state? This goes on in Kansas, and, and this will be number 20. Two, okay, 22 it? i think yeah this will be the 22nd one they go on twice a year every year and um we go to all of them i've never missed a single one and in fact this i think i'm the, the second semi semi-annual yeah semi-annual um i think i'm the only person that's never missed one i think i'm the only person that's been to all 22 of them you and me but yeah yeah right yeah um so pretty cool uh, let me see here helen says tell me more about your indoor fig tree b because i want to get one um where did i get that i think you got it at like tractor mm. supply it was like a little tiny box that was like it had a mm. yep it was thinner than a pencil the stick yep. that was coming out of that and i've had it for i don't know four five years yeah and 
uh, one of the community members has a fig that she takes in and out during the summertime. And she said, you need to take that outside to pollinate it. Mm -hmm. And so I took it outside and I did get a, a fig on it on there, but it, it uh, rotted and died on the vine mm -hmm. or on the tree when I brought it in. And now it's, Oh, the dogs chewed them off. That's mm -hmm. what happened. Mm -hmm. The um, when we got the two outdoor dogs last year, they chewed both of the fig trees off mm -hmm. to like three inches. Yeah, and then uh, we brought them in, and they started to grow. And now there's a fig on there. I don't yeah. know what species is it, it is. Yeah, when I walked by, I was in tractor supply one day, and I walked by, and I, I just seen a box that said they were like six bucks. Cold hardy fig. It was like five ninety nine. I'm like, be like that. She likes to grow stuff. And it's still there, right? Yeah, I've got two that mm -hmm. I carry. I put them, they say cold hardy, but I still bring them in through yeah. the winter. We don't need any more we bring in in the winter. No, we don't. Mm -hmm. Did you turn your ringer off? I, I thought I did. Apparently, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Busted. Hey, yeah. Big Kid says, Tag, when I opened freesteading earlier today, I was a bit surprised to see porn blatantly on the main page. Why someone would post that there? I have no idea, big kid. At the end of the day, I mean, I can't sit on freesteading and manage it all the time. And we have a bunch of moderators just report it. We'll kick that person off. But um, it's not a um, it's not a job that does anything. We just created it so people had some place to talk. So, um, you know, bear with me, but just report it. And, um, you know, we'll make sure we kick them off there. But yeah, I was going to say they do kick them off, but yeah, they have to um, know that it's there before they can do that. Uh, and there's not a lot of mods that are on there, is there? There's quite a few. Yeah, there's quite a few people who have who you has know, the ability do that. to yeah. do that. Yeah. Johnny says, last time I was in Willis, Texas, I got popped doing 94 and a 60. I bet that was cheap. Well, what were you doing a 94 and a 60 in the yeah. first place? I Johnny? have three gallon fig trees, black mission, LSU purple, Salente, and Texas Everberry. Oh, pretty cool. Oh. Yeah. And Helen says, Oh, the dogs pruned the trees. <laughs> yes, they did. Yeah. Eagle Lover said, I was on today and did not see it. Yeah, we, well, we try to jump on it. If someone tells me or, you know, like many of you guys have my cell phone, you know, if someone texts me, we'll deal with it. But just so you guys know on free study, again, it's it's a free site. We pay for it out of our pocket. And um, we really was hoping that it would just allow people to yoke up. But at the end of the day, I'm not on there every minute of every hour. You know, I check in a couple times a week. That's it. And then off we go to try to, you know, build a community building or, you know, whatever else I've got, you know, got on my plate. So let me see here. Oh yeah, she got all kinds of them. Pretty cool. But anyway, super excited about doing a live from there. Super excited about um, showing you guys who really is behind it all because it's not me. You know, like I said, I'm one guy. We have a, a whole community full of great leaders and, and I'm telling you, it's not me, you know, it's it's them. And um, I'm hoping to, to listen to their stories and and then you guys can hear from them about the trials and the tribulations. Do you have people picked out already? I've got some in mind. I want to talk to them first, but I'm also hoping I get a bunch of volunteers. Oh, I love that. And even people that I don't even know all that well that maybe come to talk about why they're at the Midwest Preparedness Project and just have a, you know, a pretty cool, you know, conversation. Story. About it. Mm -hmm. I'll get that I out like there. like that. Yeah. So that'd be pretty cool. Right. And that's coming up really, really quick. And that's this in May. That's in May. And this year I'm not doing a lot of traveling, so I'm not doing a lot of speaking events. I'm going to sit home and build a community building. That gotta, was the goal was to yeah. put the community building up. All of yeah. your efforts have been directed towards that. Yes. And so I'm, I'm working hard on that. Um, the food forest abundance stuff is growing fast on my end. And, and um, I might end up sitting on the earth council with them. And, um, you know, it's funny this week, B cracked me up. She said, I don't know why, why did you have my phone? Why don't you tell the story about Joel? Um, she had my phone. Why did I have your phone? I don't know. Um, yeah, I was doing something. We were, we were driving. Mm -hmm. We're driving to my Jeep. He won't talk on his phone because he says that he can't hear in the Jeep, but then, so he'll give me the phone. And then I was looking through it and I'm like, you got a, a new email from Joel Salatin. Yeah. I didn't realize you were talking with him. Mm -hmm. And he was like, well, yeah. Um, like you're, what is the earth council? That mm. sounds like, that sounds interesting. Yeah. I'll have uh some point I'll have Joel on the show, but I would um, love that. 
yeah, it'd be pretty cool. But anyway, it was just funny to me that she said, like, it was some surprise. That well, yeah, because I didn't realize, I mean, I don't go through your email, so it's not, I didn't, I had not known that you guys were chatting before. I didn't yeah. know. I was like, G Jim Gale and Joel Salatin is yeah. on. He's like, well, yeah, I just had a, me a meeting with them. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I didn't realize that you were important. Yeah, I'm not important, but you live in a land of, you know, cotton candy, rainbows, and what do we call it? Fairy farts, right? <laughs> I don't know about all that. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. Nito says that. Uh, I'm sorry, I, that went right by. Yeah. I'll get back to that one. Um, was Midwest hoping they says, stayed under six feet. I need uh, to bring it inside in the winter. Yeah, I'm done bringing stuff inside because man, her pots are so big and so heavy. She's like, "Honey, come here, come here, move this for me." I'm like, Ugh. I put them on wheels this time. Yeah. I'm hoping that I don't need your help. I'll just <laughs> wheel them in by myself. Nito said, "I get on free sitting looking for people in northern Nevada. Most of Nevada are in the southern part." Mm. Yeah. Keep looking. They're, they got to be there. Yeah. Uh, Instigator says uh, that if you keep them in, in containers, they stay a lot smaller, which, yeah, that would be good to know. Right. So don't yep. plant them in a bigger pot. Yep. Um, we talked about Midwest Paradise, but there's two other festivals coming up uh, pretty quick. I just added them on here. So Self Reliance Festival is going on in Camden, Tennessee on April 6th and 7th. Guys, I've made a, I've done a lot of good at um, Self Reliance Festival. Met a lot of really, really good people. Um, and so this, I think it's a great place to go. I've enjoyed my time. I've gone to the last four. I'm not going to this one because again, I've got other things going on, but, um, I absolutely support them. I think it's a good cause. I think it's a good place. And I think the head's in the right place. So go check that out. And then also don't forget the Kentucky sustainable living homesteading and preparedness festival, which is going on March 23rd through the 24th. Um, they're in Bowling Green, Kentucky. That's just next. That's like two weeks away. Yeah. Two weeks away. Um, but you can find all of them there. And if you're around the area, you know, go. Um, Tamara says, B, you have your tractor now? <laughs> yes, it was delivered last week. Oh, I have a picture. And I did get to use it. I moved some feed. I moved uh, 250 pounds of a barrel of feed. I just pulled it right up to Gypsy's she trailer is, in and tractor. he just pushed the barrel into my bucket and I just tipped it back and <laughs> drove to the gate where Tag was there to be my gate opener. Mm -hmm. And typically it's the other way around. Yeah, typically I'm the one running down the road trying to get to the gate before you do. But I think you probably walked as slow as the tractor was going. And yeah. I was so nervous about that barrel. Just like if I stopped, it would like go forward and like tip that barrel just like right out of my bucket. So Gypsy's like, if you lift the bu the bucket up higher, it like tips it back farther. So like you could have told me that before I drove. It took me like 15 minutes to go 600 feet. Yeah, Tim said there's a great pig processing Um class two days before self-reliance festival um mm -hmm. you guys i i know john at soe pretty good and um the guy's a driven guy you know he's all about solutions he's all about getting it done and if you if you don't come out motivated you know hanging out with him you know you're not going to right so uh i absolutely urge you guys to to check it out my nephew is going to be able to intern for joe salatin but i hear it's really hard to get an internship with him right now he is learning from dr natasha campbell mcbride how cool is that? Yeah, I'm excited about it. And, um, you know, I'm learning a lot from Joel and um, Jim Gale. And, you know, I'm in meetings. I have a meeting with them every single Monday um, at 10 o'clock in the morning. And this will go on for a long period of time as we're working on a bigger project. But um, it's really, really cool. I'm uh, super excited to be there. Yeah. Did you talk about the food forest? You want to put the talk, show a little of that or I don't know, I don't know if they can see it yet but oh well, it is kind of dark yeah, it's kind of dark but I'll, I'll do it on one of the about one of the lives coming up once you make up your mind oh I gotta make a mind yeah decision. you gotta make your mind up oh my goodness okay where am I at here um uh, you see sad I won't be able to attend uh Kentucky Cinema Living and self-reliance as planned this spring uh, that's right they'll do it in the fall too are you going to Midwest preparedness Skanes girl I just need to practice with my tractor. 
that way I can get a little faster. Were you, when you first got the skid loader, you were fast already. You were like ramrodding it from the beginning. I, I drove before, babe. I wasn't a skid loader? New, it wasn't new to me. Oh, yeah. Construction. <laughs> uh. Skeletor. <laughs> Are you going to answer this question? Conserve friends is a very important question for you. Um, at B, you going to do the timed maintenance? Yeah. You're going to do the maintenance on the tractor? Yeah. Oh, cool. It's under warranty. So I'll like, hey, <laughs> hey, like, come and fix the noisy. It go boom, boom. <laughs> Yeah, Chris White says uh, Polyface Farm is an awesome setup, worth a visit in Virginia. He told me if I'm anytime I want to come, he'd roll the red carpet out. So maybe what I'll do is one of these days we'll get a you know 16 passenger van and see how many people from here want to go out and hang out with Joel, and we'll take some community members and and um, you know with intention and with purpose, right, of learning. So we'll take the people who need to learn and are interested in learning. Maybe we'll all drive out to Virginia and see Joel. That's a quite a drive. Yeah. Tamara says just practice. Yeah, it's total practice. And and she'll get it down. She's very slow with the tractor right now, but I'm not getting involved in I have Gosh, I was trying to go down the driveway and it was like my seat bounces. I was all <laughs> over the place. And I was like, should I be going this fast? Yeah. Well, our driveway is very bumpy right now. It's never been this mm -hmm. bumpy before. It needs to be graded. <laughs> Skane's girl says, damn skippy, I'll be a Midwest preparedness project. You gonna do another wrap? Yeah. Is there a new one? Can we get a commitment? <laughs> Can we get a commitment to do another rap skates, girl? Come on now. Don't be a hater. Don't be a hater. Just say yes. You just do the do the same one. Yep. 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 She's cautious. Yep. It's needing to learn. In six months, B will be a pro. Yeah. And again, it's her, it's her machine. So she'll do her thing with it. And um it'll be good, right? Yeah, I like it a lot. It's really pretty. It's the looker. It's a looker. It's a looker. Yep. Mm -hmm. Bonafide. Yep. It's a bonafide. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is, oh, brother, where art thou? Where art thou? Where art thou? Yep. Tim says graded driveway. Yeah. Sounds like a perfect job for a new tractor. Yep. And I've got a box blade for mm -hmm. it. All she's got to do is put it on and go practice. Just drive up and down the driveway. Yeah. And you just grade it and make it smoother and smoother and smoother. Do you have to like push down on the box blade? It just drags it. No, you've There's got controls on okay. how much pressure you want to put down. You'll control that from inside your heated and air-conditioned cab, which, by the way, it's, there's all kinds of fancy buttons. Yeah, I don't know if this is a coincidence. You guys, have, tell me, is this just a coincidence? So my equipment, I have a skid steer. It's opened, right? It has a door. You chose it's to old. take it off. It's old. And the heater barely works, and the air conditioner don't work. My equipment does not have that. My UTV that I That's... drive around. Hold on, let me finish. My, my UTV that I drive around with. No air. No heat. Does your UTV have air and heat? Yes, it does. Does your equipment have air and heat? I only have the tractor. Does the tractor I, have air I and have heat? I have one item. Does it have heat in here? Yes. Okay. But let's tell all these fine folks that yours <laughs> had heat in air when you got it. You ripped it off the top of it. No, it never had air. Heat, air never worked. It had it. Had it. Never worked. I had a box on top of it, but yeah, never worked. Did my UTV ever have it? No, you purchased it like that, mm -hmm. though. You were like, I don't need that. There's mm -hmm. no doors on it. Why would you get heat and air if there's like, yeah. it's an open concept? Yeah. And um. it is loud. <laughs> you could practice by grading the local county roads. Yeah, it'd be helpful. Please. Actually, you can't, you can't grow, grade the county roads around here. You'll mm -hmm. get in trouble. Um, yeah, Tim says you can drag with the loader, too. Yeah, Skins Girl says, can I be committed? Is that what you're asking? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You see here, we're in a tight spot. We thought you was a toad. Love that movie. Oh, yeah. We <laughs> thought you was a toad. In this place, a geographical oddity. Two weeks from everywhere. Yes. <laughs> Great movie. Oh, brother, we're out there is what we're talking about. You can only get in trouble if they catch you. Hint, hint. Yeah. Yeah, because her friend says, do you have a heated seat? No, I don't. I don't have a heated seat. Mm -hmm. Was that an option? <laughs> <laughs> Next topic. <laughs> right? Uh, one Step Closer says, fantastic soundtrack to that movie. That's a great movie. I can watch that movie over and over again. It's one, it's one that me and B could watch all 
pretty much that is anytime. one that I don't mind watching again. Yeah. Unlike Waterworld. I cannot watch <laughs> Waterworld not one more time in my life. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So what's next? You, you got some on your list? I mean, we got several trips to the dump. Yeah, that we was got a big the deal. place tags getting his wish on getting the spring cleaning done. So we're yep. like tidying up and cleaning stuff out. I'm like, oh, we're gonna throw away that used toilet. And he's like, Yes, we are. Yeah, there's just you can't keep everything. Somebody left a toilet that wasn't even our toilet. No. Came out of a camper, but it got thrown in the dump. Yes. We we took we were able to clean up a bunch of stuff. Johnny says you could always plug a heated blanket into an inverter. She's actually got mm. plugs in her tractor. I did, yeah. Yeah. It's a cigarette lighter, which is kind of interesting. No, it's not a cigarette lighter. It's a 12-volt outlet. That's where you lighter. stick a cigarette lighter. It wouldn't work. How do you know? That's not how they make them anymore. It's what do you just mean? a 12-volt outlet. <gasps> really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got gypped. Yeah, Tamber said you can use the old toilet as a planter, which is exactly why yes. I threw it in the trailer. Yes. 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 I have watched Secondhand Lines. That's a good movie, too. Have you watched that? I don't think so. All right, so what do we got next here? Let me see. Oh, one, one, one more about, I can watch Oh Brother over and over, and I can listen to the soundtrack all day, too. I agree, it's a great movie and a great soundtrack. Yeah, it is. So this is interesting. You guys know for the Chips for America Act. And so uh, the new micro uh, microchip construction boom. Last week, the White House announced this funding of a $1.5 billion chip maker, Global Foundries, described in New York Times as the first sizable grant from the 22 CHIPS Act that is aimed at um, invigorate research and manufacturing in the semiconductors in the United States. So there's a big move to bring um, chip manufacturing back to the United States because right now it's being done overseas. But do you guys notice anything interesting in that picture? A picture of the United States. I'll leave it up there for a minute and see if you guys notice anything interesting. I find it interesting. I don't know if you find it interesting, but I do. So there's two in Texas. Yeah. yeah. Jules says, I have a travel blanket that plugs into a 12 volt. Tag, you should have taken that toilet and put it by the mailbox with a sign saying vote Democrat here. <laughs> yep. Eagle lover for the win. That's right. It talks about EMP shield in Kansas. Small little Kansas company out there running with the big dogs. We'll see. Hope it works out. Anyway, I just thought I'd brag a little. Can't help myself. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, I think that's fantastic. That's a good yep. good deal for you know, for for all of the US bringing some yeah. of that back home. Yeah. To where we can have jobs and have some of that cuz a lot of these chip devices are not being shipped over because of yeah, the shortages. Yeah, and it's not just that, babe, but our enemies who make a lot of, oh, these, that's a lot of these chips, you know, they're putting kill switches in them and they're putting stuff on them that, you know, put takes our national security um, and puts it in danger. And so regardless of who gets all of the, the money and how that all goes, bringing manufacturing back to the United States is a wonderful thing 100% of the time um, in my guys. Hey, Brett Boyd, how are you? Um, so what else do you got? Yeah. That we can get down to some current events. Oh, well, I had the mid Midwest preparedness on my thing. We already talked about it. Yep. So, oh, and you already talked about that one too. But which one? Oh, the shower? Yeah. No, okay. I grouted the shower and I cleaned up after you. So you want to do current events? Sure. Since we're an hour and 13 minutes in anyway. Oh. Okay. So I found these interesting. So... The first uh, uh, post there said that now that removing Trump was uh, from the ballot is off the table because the Supreme Court ruled that they couldn't do that, right? The deep state will have no other options. Um, they have to cheat in the election, cancel the election, and, or eliminate Trump. Do they release another pathogen? Do they initiate World War III? A cornered animal is a dangerous animal, which I found was interesting. And as soon as I seen that, I went on to look, and apparently breaking voters in Dallas uh, County, Texas, are receiving voting machine errors. When voting, they are told to put their ballots in box five to be counted later. Does this sound familiar? <laughs> and then right after that, kidding. I seen another one that said, breaking report. 
Um, the Democrats um, have introduced a bill to kick Trump, Trump off the ballot immediately after the Supreme Court ruled 9-0 that he'd be allowed to stay. What is he doing? What's he doing? Him. Oh, he's got his thumb on his head. Maybe shape of an L on your forehead. Is that what he's doing? I don't know. I don't know. But I found that fascinating. Um, this was a good one, too. And it said, uh, you know, they're talking about the State of the Union address. And they talked about how tomorrow night, a man who was recently found mentally unfit to stand trial. So what that means is, do you guys remember in the, um, uh, you know, all of the classified documents they found in his garage? And for you know, Biden, for Biden. So he was, he was found mentally unfit to stand trial. Well, what they said was, is that um, he was lacking mentally and he couldn't remember his son's death. He couldn't remember when, you know, all of these different things and that a trial would do no good is basically what the ruling came out to be. And so what this guy is saying, not Kenny Rogers is saying is tomorrow night, a man who is recently found mentally unfit to stand trial will be giving a speech to let everyone know the current state of the union. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Right there. Yep. L for loser. Yep. Yeah. I, uh, you know, well, I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit more later too, but you know, at the end of the day, you guys, it's all the deep state. I promise you, regardless of what party, but since we're picking on them, I'm going to keep on picking on them. So I took out, just thought you guys, um, might find it interesting, but, um, I took out some of his quotes throughout the state of the union address for many people who didn't watch it. Um, just so that I'd share them with you because I think they're interesting. So this was last night. This was yeah, yesterday when um, the um, State of the Union came out. Um, and it says, so the first one I want to talk about was what makes our moment rare is that freedom and democracy are under attack both at home and overseas at the very same time. So what would you get out of that if the president was to say that? Oh, the, he said that. This is Biden in the State of the Union. He says, what makes this moment rare is that freedom and democracy are under attack both at home and overseas at the very same time. Like, what are you going to do about it, dude? Yeah, well, I think what's interesting about that isn't that, is that what he's recognizing is that there is social disorder at home and it's overseas. And I think that that's a big part of this, um, all of the chaos that's going on is there's nowhere really that's not going through chaos today, right? I mean, it's going on everywhere. And for him to address it, I think, um, you know, it's pretty interesting. The next one says Biden went on to demand lawmakers and Americans join together to defend our democracy. So what he said is shut up and obey. I think Biden spent a lot of his time in this speech attacking Americans. And I think this is a good example of that. You know, these demand that lawmakers and uh, Americans join together and defend democracy. But again, what he's really saying is shut up and obey, in my opinion. He went on to say, remember your oath of office to defend against all threats, foreign and domestic. So what he's saying is stand up to anybody that's against the state inside the United States and abroad. Well, Again, yeah. right? Yeah. Shut up and obey. Um, he went on to say January 6th and lies about the 2020 election and the plots to steal the election posed the greatest threats to democracy since the Civil War. But they failed, he continued. My predecessor and some of you here seek to bury the truth about January 6th. I will not do that. This is the moment to speak the truth and to bury the lies. Here's the simple truth. You can't love your country only when you win. See, I think this is super interesting, too, because he's talking about the lies. of, And he'll go on to, to, to talk about the flip side of this here in a little bit. But the lies um, about the 2020 election. And um, I think it's crazy because... The 2020 election is when, for me, I really got to a point where I no longer believed there was a political solution to what's going on. Because you cannot convince me that Biden won more events, won more votes right. than any other president ever. I mean, I just have such a hard time, you know, buying that. Uh, he went on and said uh, he implored Republican lawmakers to support a bill that would strengthen security along the U.S.-Mexican border. Isn't that crazy how open borders, open borders, open borders, open borders. And, and now, now he he's saying, I want to strengthen it. And he even said in there that um, give me the power. I can fix it in one day. But the Republicans won't give me the power. The Republicans won't give me the power. And what's so fascinating about this now, going back to one of my earlier statements, is that he got busted for classified documents. Remember when they when they um, raided mar -Lago yes. for Trump for classified documents? Yes. It's like they're always accusing the other person of what they're guilty of themselves. 
right? And so he said, you know, I implore Republican lawmakers to support a bill that would strengthen security along the U.S. border. The legislation stalled last month after Trump signaled he opposed it. Right. He went on to say, Wall, this is actually super fast. This, this, this line right here, um, I think is super interesting. Wall Street didn't build this country. The middle class built this country and the unions built the middle class. That's big to me. So the unions, right, which is a Democrat, right? The unions are what built the country. Super, super crazy. The president said that he had learned to embrace freedom and democracy, a future based on core values that have defined America, honesty, decency, dignity, and equality. This is interesting, too, because the whole, I wish I could highlight these while I was doing this. Equality. There is no part of our founding documents, how this country was, none of that, that talk talks about, about us being equal. Right. It's not about that. None of us are equal. Me and B are not equal. And there ain't a single one of you in this audience tonight that, and me are equal. It's because we're just all different people. I just think it was inter uh, interesting you put that in there um, to give everyone a fair shot, to give hate no safe harbor. He also went on to talk about the Supreme Court majority. Right. When he's talking about um, the uh, Roe versus Wade decision. And with all due respect, justices, women are not without electoral or political power, Biden said. So we had a sitting president who came up on stage, was clearly hyped up. I think they gave him like, I don't know, adrenaline or something to make him more coherent because it was late at night and attack the American people, attack the Supreme Court justice, right? Attack the Republican Party a whole lot. It was way more like a campaign, um, you know, uh, speech than it was anything else. Biden, in a swipe at Trump, added respect, um, free and fair elections. Restore trust in our institutions and make clear that political violence has absolutely no place in America. I find, isn't it, maybe I'm just weird this way, but go back up to what I said before. He, on January 6th, lies about the 2020 election, right? And down here, he talks about respecting free and fair elections. But here's where that really gets interesting. As he went on to say, I inherited an economy that was on the brink. Now our economy is the envy of the world. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. 15 million new jobs in three years. Yeah. You don't mention that 15 million jobs is because there's 5 million people working three jobs to pay their bills. Yeah. Right. Then, then the last one I want to share with you guys, but I'll, I'll get off this because I just think it's just crazy. But this, this last one I put last on purpose. Biden also said in his administration wants to eliminate title insurance fees for federally backed mortgages while investing and building 2 million more affordable homes. What do you think about that statement? Is there anything crazy in that statement that you think is weird? Why? What do you think? Do you know what title insurance is? No. Um, so there's a lot of insurances that come with a mortgage and, you know, title insurance or PMI, right? There's, there's, there's a lot of stuff that comes into that. But what he's saying is you will play, you will pay a smaller mortgage if you let the government take your mortgage, right? right? That's what he's saying. He's saying, okay, for federal loans, We'll make it a lot cheaper on you. I think he's delusional. Yeah, you think? Let me see if I can get to some uh, some of these comments. Johnny says democracy is the biggest threat. To, Democrats are the biggest threat to democracy. I would, I agree they're a threat to democracy, but I don't think they're any less of a threat than the Republicans, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> I don't. I think I think they have got us such scammed. I think that you know. No matter which way you go, one might be it's quicker, one might be slower, but none of this is changing. No, it's not changing. It's not this changing. is the no. Jones plantation all over again. All over again. Yeah. But George Orwell said some are more equal than others. Some are more equal <laughs> yeah. than others. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Cross said he was drugged up for sure. I think they gave him adrenaline or something because he sure seemed to be, Spunky. or maybe vitamin B12 or something like, yeah, like, I don't. Well, it might have been a different Biden. Oh, well, that's true. <laughs> If the mummified meat puppet wants to secure the border, why not put those 83,000 new IRS agents there? Yeah. Eagle Lover says, uh, Life Done Free, I saw a video today that showed his speech was the same as the two previous years, almost word for word. Yeah, you got to be kidding. Great. 11 of the last 13 months, all the job numbers revised down. 99% of the jobs created were government and health care. The man that shouts out, say his name, was a gold star father, was arrested in jail. Yeah, so if you guys don't know what this was, 
um, there was a man in there that heckled Biden and shouted out, um, and he was a gold star father. His son died in, in um, the withdrawal of Afghanistan that night. Remember when the Afghanistan, the withdrawal was all botched, his son was, and they arrested that father and jailed him um, for it. No one really owns their land. They're only renting. Look up allodial tiles. I'm super familiar. I've actually done a lot of studying on it. In fact, if you look, here's the original land patent right here to my land as I was doing some homework. Um, there you go, Hippocrates. There you go, right there. We agree 100% power is the threat to democracy. Mm. Yep. Yep. Yeah, they don't want you to have that. That's right. This is perfectly said, instigator. Could not agree more. I'm still trying to find one word that he said was true. <laughs> Jules, they've been drugging him for years. We are a constitutional republic, not a damn democracy. Couldn't agree with me. Yep. And I wish they would use that, right? Um, unless your last name is Rothschild, we are screwed. Mm. Ouch. Yeah. Wasn't it past his bedtime? That's why I kind of think uh, um, they gave him adrenaline or something. He shouted out 13 Marines. Um, MTG shouted, say her name about Lincoln. Yeah, so this was interesting. We were talking about the father shouted out 13 Marines, which he was arrested. Um, Miss Green, who she's from Georgia, was in the audience, a senator, and she said, um, say her name, say her name. What she was talking about was um, Lincoln Riley, and Biden mispronounced her name and called her Lincoln Riley during the speech, but um, about the little legal immigrant who killed her. She was out for a walk, and this, this guy had been in trouble. Remember all that? And so that's, that's what they're talking about there. Um, the government increased the national debt by $865 billion in the fourth quarter 2023 uh, to grow. Yeah, I'm going to talk about a billion. How many people know what a billion even is? Do you know what a billion is? No. Nope. <laughs> I've know? never seen a billion. Yep. A billion. Um, that's a lot of ones. Yes. He called Lake and Riley, Lincoln Riley. That's correct. Um. So let's talk about what a billion is. So we printed six trillion dollars in 2020. Um, the average annual U.S. salary is sixty thousand. That's a hundred million years were stolen. Oh. Oh, isn't that crazy? But let's talk about a billion. So a billion seconds ago was 1959. A billion minutes ago, Jesus was alive. A billion hours ago, our ancestors were living in the Stone Ages, and a billion days ago, no one, no one walked on Earth on two feet. A billion dollars ago was eight hours and 20 minutes of government spending. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Does that help you understand what a billion dollars is? Wow. A billion dollars ago was eight hours and 20 minutes. Eight hours. Eight hours. Yeah. Crazy, right? When a billion hours ago, our ancestors... We're living in the Stone Age. A billion seconds ago, it was 1959. Mm. Just crazy. Ridiculous. When they claim something is a threat to our democracy, that means a threat to their democratic institutions. It has nothing to do with the threat to the public. I totally agree. Yep. Total disgrace. Yep. That's ridiculous. Yep, a billion is a thousand million. <laughs> Yeah, I felt like the Speaker of the House was a male Pelosi. He clapped and agreed with his head. Guys, here's the thing, and I keep saying this over and over and over again. Nobody's coming to save you. No party. It doesn't make any difference. It is one party. It's the Republicans, and they bicker about the little details back and forth. But Trump spent just as much money and is just as guilty for the $34 trillion of debt as Obama is. Well, he was going to clean this swamp. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, or so, drain. He was right. going to drain the right. swamp. And, and guys, I, I respect all of your opinions, all of them. And I've had people on this channel comment he wasn't allowed to drain the swamp, right? Yeah. And we've heard that. So if he can't fix it, then electing him isn't going to fix anything. If he can right. fix it and different and didn't, it didn't fix anything. Nothing's going to get fixed. Is my point. Either he could and didn't, or he wasn't allowed to and didn't. And can't. And can't. So what's the difference? Mm. Yep. Two wings of the same bird. I think that is exactly. Gregory says that's a new perspective on a billion. Yeah, I thought it was great that One Step Closer talked about a billion just prior to my next yeah. slide, which I had loaded. You know, 
I think that was awesome. Perfect timing, one step closer, impeccable. I think Pelosi had a billion ounces of liquor. <laughs> yeah, Hippocrates says, if you drain the swamp, where's all the swamp water going? Brett says, we're in serious trouble. We lost our way and God will sort it out. Well, he's the only one with enough power to do it now because Trump they don't have the power to do it. Biden ain't going to do it. And we, the people, are sitting on our phones as they spray chemtrails above us. We don't notice it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Sadly, when Trump wins, the deep state is so deep that he will only be able to slow them down extra time to prep. There may be some truth to this, concern, friends, and that, and I've even told that to be, is it might slow things down, but it's not changing the path we're on. You guys, a billion minutes ago, Jesus was alive. A billion dollars ago was eight hours and 20 minutes. We're not getting out of this. I mean, at the rate that it's going, we are never going to pay off the national debt. They're going to have to default on it and create a new currency. And guess how that happens? New world order, one world government, one world currency, cryptocurrency, right? This is the, the, the um, you know, central bank digital currency. This is how it happens. They're going to crash the dollar. But in order to crash the dollar, what they need to happen, it's super, super critical. We need some big event to justify it because we have to get you scared so you'll accept it. I don't know, a big event like World War III, a big event like going to war with Russia, a big event like, um, you know, bringing Israel into it, war with China, right? A big event like a new plague. There's a lot of those. Babe, I'm telling you, they're never getting out of this and they know they're never getting out of this. So a billion dollars ago was eight hours and 20 minutes. If you, I mean, mm -hmm. every day. Thank God for that 20 minutes because otherwise it'd be three times a day. Yeah. Right but, now it's... Three. It's two. Well, more well, than two. 20 minutes. Yeah. You got 20 minutes. Well, eight hours, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, I fear they will take him out. They have nothing to offer except lies, except if they want a fall guy. So I could absolutely oh. see them allowing Trump to get back into office so that they can blame this huge collapse, which we all know is coming. So that they have somebody to blame. Now, that would make some sense to me. The Republicans did it. Trust the Democrats. We told you people. We told you. We told you that they were bad. MAGA was bad. Orange Man was bad. It's crazy. We told you. They were like, Trump was like, put up the wall, put up the wall, put up the wall at the border, right? Mm -hmm. And then Biden came in and was like, stop that now. You know, all these yep. executive orders. And then now he's like, they wouldn't let me do it. Yeah. It's, it's like, isn't, that, that, it, it, that, isn't that interesting it. how how Joe Biden says, I don't have the power. Give me the power to put the wall up, give me the power to fix the border, but he has the power to give the Ukraine money. He has the power to do it in Israel. He has the power to bomb the Houthis, feed the Palestinians and give money to Israel at the same time. But he, but he can't do it on our own border. No, oh, give me that shit. I don't buy it for a second. They're already talking about putting boots on the ground in Ukraine. Russia has already started moving nukes. Oh yeah. It's we, I'm telling you, this country needs a big boogeyman to get you to swallow the pill. I would expect it. I would absolutely expect it. <laughs> Kelly Ireland said, oh, good grief, a Biden commercial just popped up. <laughs> I don't mean to rant, you guys, but it's like, there is no way they're getting out of this without some big event. They're just not. There's just not. Stroke of a pen. That's right. Remember, you can't complain if you give the power. Hitler, Hitler didn't take the power. It was given because of the dangers at the time. 100%. 100%. Right? What would make all of those German people turn their backs on the gas chambers? Mm. And they did. But they didn't in one switch, babe. It was a whole bunch of little things along the way. Oh, don't worry about high-capacity magazines. We'll still let you keep your guns. Oh, you just can't have a semi-automatic one. That's all it is. You can still have shotguns. You can still have hunting rifles. Well, you can't, you can only have shotguns if you have a permit. Right. And it's just, it's a death by a thousand cuts and they've been doing, doing it to us for so long. They're doing it right now with inflation, with housing prices. My property taxes just went up $20,000 talking about the value of my property. And one year it didn't do any major improvements to it, but you know what that's all based on is them pushing those housing prices up. Because it's put those housing prices up, it's more revenue, the states could spend more and more programs because of the decreasing value of the dollar. People think that the housing prices went up because my house is worth more. No, it's because your government's playing you like a fool. 
and we just suck it up and keep doing it. Oh, keep doing it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> ABB says that was a damn fine rant. <laughs> uh-huh. Yep. That's right. Scare the crap out of people and they will fall in line. Yes. Yep. And guys, it's coming. I'm telling you, the big old boogeyman's around the corner. And every single thing you have to ask permission for makes you vulnerable to the big old boogeyman. You better start doing it yourself. Yep. Hey, Cross, we should stock up on crossbows. <laughs> a lot of things. Where do you draw the line in the sand? This is a great question, Cheryl. This is an absolute fabulous question. See, this is the thing. I'm not going to draw a line in their game. I'm done playing their game. To me, that's the line. My line was a long, long time ago. They took a lot from me. I already drew my line and said, never again am I going to be like this. And am I going to be in this situation? So I don't spend a lot of time worrying about them. Um, My taxes went up. I'm not going to not pay my taxes. I'm going to go pay my taxes. But here's the thing. Because I don't have a mortgage, I don't have a car payment, I don't have you know uh, an electric bill, I don't have a water bill, I don't have a sewer bill. I can withstand those things a lot longer. Um, I don't know any other way around it. Um, some of those things you're going to have to go, but I think the way you draw the line in the sand is you just ignore them. You say no more. You quit buying into the um, the, the two party system. I'm telling you guys, John Galt, 2024, and um, you know you create your own systems and you create community and you just try to separate as far as you can for the system because it is going to collapse. And when it collapses, what do you have left? Because if you get to that collapse moment, if you get to when all of these things happen and you're you're on your knees with your hands in the air begging for some crumbs to come off the table and saying, hey, please give me a little bit of electricity, you had plenty of time. You have nobody to blame but yourself. And I'm not talking to you, Cheryl, specifically. No, I'm just ranting because I don't know how I got all worked up. I just did. <laughs> Okay, now you're riled up. Can you explain the banking thing happening on the 11th, the reserve requirement? Sure, easy. Now that you got me all wild up, let me keep going. I didn't know anything about it, so. Okay, so for a long, 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 long time, well, pretty much all of history, banks and lending institutions had to carry a reserve. So basically what that means is for $1 deposited, you had to carry 50 cents in reserves. You actually had to have 50 cents of that dollar. Well, that number slowly changed over time. And prior to um, COVID, it was 10 cents. So for every dollar that got deposited, you actually had to keep 10 cents. You could loan the rest out. You could do whatever you wanted to. You could invest it, but you had to keep just 10 cents. And that was the reserve. Okay. When COVID came along, um, and by the way, you guys remember when COVID started, right? You had all the riots going on all over places. You had burning cities here in America. You had them over in France. You had them over at all, you know, all of these things that were going on. Our economy was turning downward fast. Boom. COVID came. So behind the scenes, why nobody was watching, the feds came out and said, okay, banks, we're now going to give you zero reserves, right? And so they're in reserve, they removed all the reserve requirements. Yep. So what Carrie's referring to is on the 11th, right here in three, three days. days, the 10%, I don't even know if it's 10, it's, I don't know what they're moving it back to. So don't quote me on that. Some reserve requirements coming back to the banks. So any of the banks that are even tiltering on the edge, are going to suffer hard right well, here. What's going to happen then? Well, what it means is they're going to have to make do and they're not going to be able to play well, all that funny money. What if they can't make do? What then they they'll go out and then the bank and then so what then happens is they go under. They they, well, they kind of go under. So they go, they go under, but what happens is the government comes in and saves the day. So the people that have money in that bank is not going to lose their money. Well, it depends. So the FDIC, the FDIC insures deposits up to $250,000. I think annuities are $350,000. So there's obviously some protections in there, but it's a great way for the government to get more assets, right? But there's, you, you guys seen all of the banks that closed, um, oh, about this time last year, there was a whole slew of them in California yeah. that closed. They closed when they could get money at 0%. So what happened is, is the Fed said, with the zero reserve stuff, the Fed said, Anytime you need money, you can come get it from us for zero, zero interest rate. So they just kept printing it. They just kept doing it, kept doing it. So the bank kept over leveraging, kept over leveraging. Well, now because of inflation, those interest rates are climbing. So the bank said back in November this year, the Fed said you can no longer borrow it at 0%. And now you have to keep a reserve. So their free get out of jail card's gone. And uh, you're going to see a whole bunch of banks fall. Yeah, Nito says it's 3%. Yeah, I thought it was something down there low which is just crazy. Even, even just think about this. Banks are going to close because they have to keep a 3% reserve and your money's in it. A 3% reserve. 
You give them a hundred dollars. All they have to be able to keep in their bank is three dollars. They can send the rest of it and do whatever they would like with it. Yeah, they want the three percent reserves and all the banks wind. Yeah, three percent is the rate. Yeah, bank buy -in. buy-ins. Yep. What's a buy-in? What banks buy in? Is that when they call their loans in? No, I don't think so. I'm not sure what she's referring to. Prepare for bail-ins, uh, Dodd Frank. Um, there's, there's not enough to pay out. I think that's not. Yeah, there's not enough. Yeah, uh, tag the FDIC has 99 years to repay your banking loss. <laughs> I did not know that. I'll look that up though, big kids, because that's interesting. I did not know that. I'm not a banking expert, but 99 years. Yeah, and the FDIC has enough to cover 1% of the eligible deposits. Little banks get bought by big banks because they have more pull with the government. Hey, Mo, by the way, welcome. Mo's a really good guy, really smart guy. Is Mo coming over tomorrow? Um, I don't think so. If you didn't get riled up about your country and your lives being destroyed, I would think there was a problem. <laughs> I'm sick of it, guys. I am absolutely sick of it. Why would anybody put money in the bank? Well, the problem is you're going to have no choice because as they as the dollar collapses and they switch to the digital currency, which I promise you is coming, you won't be able to keep anything at home. It won't matter. The only thing you're going to be able to have is assets. Um, let me see here. Oh, wrong one. Helen says uh, Bank of America warned the dollar is going to collapse. And yes, FDIC can pay you back in 99 years. So the government wants to be our bank. The government's going to be our bank, Gary. It's already happening. Very, very shortly when you get online and you buy something from Amazon, the money will go to FedNow first. FedNow will then pay Amazon. So the FedNow program that they've got in place there, they will be the middleman. Did they go through with that? Oh, yeah. FedNow, oh, I thought yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, buy what you need now. You guys, there is no time anymore to fiddle fart around. No fiddle farting. There's no time. That ship has sailed. Anyway, I'm going to get on to a new slide because this ship pisses me off. Stuff. Stuff. St this stuff oh, is bothersome. So I found, I caught YouTube messing with my videos. And I am super, super glad that I caught it because um, it's funny to me how they purposely try to uh, send out the messages they want you to hear. And they hide the messages you don't. Guys, I never got into this for subscribers. I never got into this for any of those reasons. I was mad because I lost my career. And I thought this would give me a place to rant as I just went on a big rant, right? But I'm going to show you guys something really funny. And I'm super glad I happened to just be sitting there when I seen it, which allowed me to, to show you guys um, another way that it works. So check this out. So my last video, tan, Tags Ramblings, a Building Community. If you look underneath the very first part of that picture, it says Life Done 3, no views after 16 hours. So if you were looking on YouTube, you would see that this guy put out this video and no one had viewed it in 16 hours. Yeah, I wouldn't watch it right? either. If you, right, and you wouldn't watch it. You'd blow right by it. Yeah. If you look at the right-hand side, this is actually from my YouTube studio. And what it shows me is that at 15 hours and 30 minutes, so 30 minutes prior to what they're saying right here, it had 250 views. You gotta be kidding. No, so they do it on purpose. And that's the same tag, yeah, tag rambling. It's right there, look, tag ramblings, 15 hours and 30 minutes, 250 views. Yep, right so many of my, thumbs of my, up. Of my last 10 videos, it ranked six out of 10, 250 impressions, right? Blah, 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 but look at, if you actually, yeah. weren't, if you weren't logged in, if I, right, which is how I seen it, Right? Jeez. And crazy? they had 23 comments on it already by yeah. hour 15. Yep. So you guys, I would check. They unsubscribe all the time. Um, one more rock says, oh my God, I just checked and I had to resubscribe. <laughs> guys. Just like that. <laughs> yep. And Jules said, uh, laugh out loud, except I commented on the video right I posted. I know you did. You guys, but I'm telling you, this is this is how it works. They don't want the message to get out. And I mean, you guys just think for yourself, if you were scrolling through YouTube and you've seen a video that looked maybe looked interesting and it said 16 hours and no views, would you click on it? No, you wouldn't. You'd say, oh, that video sucks. <laughs> Unless they're like, oh, it's from Tag. I'm going to watch well, it anyway. Right, maybe. But I'm talking about new people. If you didn't know. If you right? didn't know, 
you wouldn't. And I just happened to be sitting there and went, oh, my goodness. Look I know at there that. was a comment on there. Let me go look it up. Yeah. YouTube doesn't want people connecting. That's why they made it hard to find people's channels. Oh, 100%. Yeah, it's just absolutely crazy. Brett says, hit the like button, guys, if this is for you. Yeah, I appreciate the likes, but and I appreciate those. Hey, Chase, Chase Peoples, what's up, bud? Um, but this stuff happens, guys, I'm telling you, all the time. Yep. I, uh, you know, they are unsubscribing people. Yep. But I busted them. I caught it. Like I said, I was just happened to be in the right place at the right time. And there you go. Tag, are you coming to the Kentucky Sustainable Living Festival? I am not as far as the spring one goes. I have got my hands full. Yep. Um, let me see here. Cheryl says, uh, YouTube asked me to rate comments all the time. What's up with that? To yeah. rate comments? I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. Jules says, uh, do you think a class action might do anything? I think you get enough people it might. But... Yeah, Gizmo says, I'm thrilled. I've only gotten two ads tonight. Last week, it was like 25. Yeah, so what I did, I changed things a little bit, Gizmo. So what I can do inside the system is I can set it for an aggressive ad revenue, meaning you make more money. You can set it for a middle one, which is just average, which is what my channel had always been. And you can set it for a low one. I set it for the low one. And this might be why it says zero views now. Right? That they're just not going to show it to anybody because... I changed it, but that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Um, let me see here. The cost for communicating on your enemy's platform, it can easily get worse and it's going to get worse. Mm -hmm. Right. Tag. If you looked at other streams, I look at all, I watch live streams all the time. If that's what you mean. No, like using, uh, probably not using YouTube. Yeah. Um, I've got a rumble channel. Um, and this, and all this stuff goes over to rumble, um, when we do it. But yeah, that's all I've got so far. A lot of comments on this live don't show up in my feed. I only know about them because you read them. Censorship, probably. Right. I've had three commercials already. Yeah, and I've got it set at the lowest amount right now. Channels I watch have been getting pushed further and further down my feed. So I have to actually search for them. I've had to do a couple of that. Yep. Almost every channel I have to resubscribe to. I always check, but forgot tonight. Yeah, screw tube. You know, Glenn says he's had two. Yeah. And guys, I can't control the, the commercials. They do what they want to do. All I can do is continue to try to mess with the, uh, you know, the settings. But. Uh, and you learn something new about trying to do the. Yeah. Ad change. I didn't know. I, and maybe that's not it. All I know is I see I was I was not logged in. I seen the video come across. I seen 16 hours of no views. That's not possible. You know, that's a low view video, but it's not. There's, there's zero chance or zero views. After 16 After hours. 16 so hours. Especially since you so, said that you already knew that somebody had made a comment. Yep, yep. And so I've learned over the years to snip clip things, right? Because they're gone quick. Yes. Right? And so, so I just snip clipped it. On it your phone. phone. I snip clipped it. And then I logged into studio to look at it. I'm like, wait a second. So I snip clipped that um, before it could change. Um, oh, that's a good point. Uh, Conserve friend says there's a, a top chat and a live chat. Yeah, if you go all the way to the top, you might just be seeing the top chat. Lisa. Yeah, lots are leaving. Oh, yes, they are. Um, Skin Girl says she hasn't had a single ad. <laughs> Who knows? All right, moving on. New topic. Here we go. So, um, first box U.S. cattle inventory smallest in 73 years. Holy cow. Yeah, this is big. Moving on to the, the purple highlighted, it says uh, in January 1st, 2024, we're 7.2 million head, 2% lower than this time in 2023. This is the lowest January 1 inventory since the USDA's 82 million estimates in 1951. Um, the calf crop is estimated at 33 million, which is down 2% last year and its smallest amount since 1948. So basically what Farm Bureau is saying is that the cattle inventory is very, very low and um or lower than it's been in a long long time and just a couple days later they're working on the omnibus spending bill right i'm talking about to keep the government open you know all of that stuff and did you know what they wrote into the spending bill lobbyists got 15 million dollars third box folks 15 million dollars to implement electronic tracking of all cattle in the united states you gotta be kidding <laughs> nope 
Yeah. Fifteen million dollars to yeah. track cows. To track cattle. And it doesn't say industrial cattle. It says all cattle. I don't know what that means necessarily, but um, it'll be used by the green agenda to limit beef production and by the corporate meat companies to dominate small ranchers. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yes, you do. Mm. Yep. Isn't that lovely, folks? Again, I want to stress what I tell you guys all the time. The time is ticking. I'm going to control my own beef needs. I don't need them. I'm going to control my own tomato needs because I don't need them. If you're not living in a place today where you can deal with it, go meet a farmer, go build a community, go spend some time where you can deal with it. Oh, great point, Vicky. Vicky says, so the environment must have been better since less cow farts. You know, they're blaming on global warming on the cow yeah. farts, right? Sanity. Yeah, what will they, oops, sorry, right there. What will they chip all the cattle at birth? Have no idea. Or it's in the feed. They're going right, to. Right, right. Right, or just not not let very many live. Yep, Jewel says, remember several years ago, they were calling cattle and chickens due to health issues. Yep. They're tracking for your safety. Yep. Oh, look at that. 10K. Hey, Bill and Fallon, good evening to you. It says 10K just lost in an Oklahoma fire. They've been wanting to track any and all cattle, pig, et cetera, population for a while. Chip the dogs, chip the hogs, chip the people. Yep. Did you see in New, the idiot in New York going after the beef industry? I don't think I did. <laughs> Big kid's a badass. Does anybody who put a tracker on my cattle will be planted here for fertilizer? Mm. Yep. Yep, the stream has frozen twice. Anybody else had that problem? Because at my end, it's looked great the whole time. Um, Salty Dog, welcome, says, um, for what is a man that gains the world but loses himself? I agree. I 100% agree. Yep. And at what cost, right? Kind of, there's, remember in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, when the, I don't remember the, the guy's name, but the former captain, he's playing with gold and he says, you know, there comes a time in, time in your life where gold loses its luster. You know? So, population reduction. One more reason for Texas to secede. I think you're actually going to see a big movement of that. And I think Texas is going to be the tip of the spear. Mm. Yeah, uh, they have been trying to make ranchers put tracking uh, chips in all the livestock. For how long now? I didn't, I've not heard any of that. Crazy. I just can't believe that we just, and maybe it's just me being bitchy, but I just can't believe that we just allow this shit to happen. That more people don't get pissed. Well, I think that a lot of people are, and that's why they're trying to grow their own food. Not everybody can grow their own cow, though. You know. Amy B says, uh, does Texas have its own power grid? It actually does. So there's an East power grid, a West power grid, and the Texas power grid. <laughs> and a Texas. Yep, of course, right? I wonder what their explanation is like saving seeds. They just put out GMO tomato seeds that are labeled heirloom, uh, heirloom, 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 trying to corrupt the DNA of our seeds. Yes. Yeah. This is why we have to not go buy those seeds. We have to grow our seeds and make sure those seeds, right, are growing the next year. I mean, there's, you know, some seeds that B has that are, 15 years old that she's grown every year and just collected the seeds out of. Um, topic change, trying a full pot of mushrooms in an Instapot, blue oyster and shiitake with more to do. Yum. Gross. B would love that though. B would be all over that. Yes, uh, I yeah. would. Um, they have been trying this since January, 2023. She says, yep. Texas has everything. Gregory says for at least 10 years. Yeah, <laughs> Nito says a, a new way of looking at saying compost your enemies, no doubt. SOS, save the seeds. Yeah, I think this is super important. We have got to take responsibility for everything that happens to us and everything that happens in our lives. Because guys, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, health is not, help is not coming. <laughs> health, help. help is not coming. Um, I found this interesting today too. So this this was actually out of uh, Topeka, Kansas. Topeka. Um, Attorney General... Kansas Attorney General Chris Kobach. Chris Kobach is a big uh, Trump supporter. Um, very, um, you know, he demand ID for voting and all of that kind of stuff. Anyway, he announced his office had filed a lawsuit on Wednesday, March the 6th in Shawnee County District Court against social media company TikTok for misrepresenting its age appropriateness in app stores, deceiving parents about the effectiveness of its parental tools 
and creating an aggress aggressively promoting an addictive app that erodes the mental health of Kansas children. Mm -hmm. Love that. Right. So there's little stuff going on, but I just thought uh, you guys would find that interesting as I did. Let me see here. We're getting close to the end. Let me keep it trucking. So this was another interesting one. I found pretty, uh, I always say interesting, but this no, was this so sad. So my mom lives in a low income um, apartment. It's just a one bedroom apartment. It's not very far from me. So I can, you know, make sure she's healthy. Well, anyway, remember this is a low income apartment. Okay. One bedroom, nothing fancy, et cetera. So if you look for my mom, the flat rate, is six hundred dollars and not to exceed six thirty one. But if you were a low income family and you needed this, a three bedroom, the ceiling rate's nine hundred and four dollars. For a low income, three bedroom apartment in the middle of Kansas, I can't imagine what this would be somewhere else. How is low income going to handle this? I was doing the math for Bethany at $15 an hour. You're spending half your money on your rent. Yeah. Half. You know, um, the credit bureau wants to see that your, um, you know, debt to income ratio is about 30%. That includes your car payment, your house payment. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is 50%. Does that include your kid? You're feeding your kids What's that? with your 30% or whatever your no, the, the, your, your debt, your debt to income about. would be your, your debt. Oh, debt. Mortgage, car okay. payments, right? Credit yeah. card debt, you know, those kind of things. Not, yeah. Yeah, Jules says there's no damn way I could afford that. I think it's nuts. And guys, this is not New York City. No. This is a town of 3,000 people in the middle of nowhere. And the it's not like a new building yeah. that's, you know, they're trying to you know, put up a new no. building and pay for it. This it, building's been there for 40 years? Jeez, yeah, oh, okay. a long time. Guys, this was, uh, my mom had asked me to turn in her paperwork to the housing authority there. And so I walked in and this was hanging on the wall. So I just took a picture of it. Effective January 1st of 24. Yep. Look at that. Fair market. That's fair market. That's fair market. Now, do you think that it's really become more valuable? No. I think that the money has the money lost don't buy anything value. That's right. Yeah. Let me see here. My crazy neighbor thinks your housing should be 50% of your income. Of course he is all backed up. Yeah. Yeah. Which by the way, did you guys see, uh, I don't mean to jump on this, but I wonder if I, I hope I saved this. I think I did. Um, screenshots. Oh. And you got a sing. if you have a single, single family or single uh, adult income with children that almost a thousand bucks for rent is it's that's insane oh, i must not have saved it well that's too single bad Single parent is what i was thinking single yeah, parent house bash on anyway trump just came out and and with a tweet praising the vaccines and saying they saved america and now those vaccines are going to go on to cure cancer and was all supportive of it, just so I say that. Was he joking? No. No, but he's the guy that started the whole vaccine thing, babe. Oh, he was. Think back, right? He did. And vaccines have saved millions of people's lives, I'm sure. he years, hired Fauci. That's a fact. That's a fact. Uh, let me see here. Terminator says, I live in a town of a thousand people. Rent here from our one bedroom is 1500 a month. For one bedroom. Crazy. Uh, Vicky says, have you all seen TikTok's commercials on Numax showing a nun using TikTok and another showing a doctor using TikTok to try to legitimize their services? I have not. I'm not on TikTok. I've had a million people say, I've got to get on there. You got to get on there. You got to get on there. I do YouTube and a little bit of Facebook. That's it. I don't want any more, you know. Um, let me see here. Nito says, BlackRock buying up all the rentals and raising prices to be unaffordable. That's yeah, a mess. Who and how do they set the rate? Says Greg. Well, the state does it, right? Yeah, I see Brett seen it. Brett said, "I'm pissed at Trump for that." Guys, I'm telling you, he is not saving you. He's not coming. I'm telling you, he's not. It might slow the process down. And I'm a and guys, you guys know this about me. I and I've admitted it. Trump did a lot of good things for our country, but he didn't do what he said he was going to do. Yeah. 
And it's either because he can't, which means then reelecting him won't matter, or he didn't, which also means reelecting him won't matter. Yeah, Chris says vaccines are now used for cancer. Yeah, in his tweet, he said that those vac the COVID vaccine will be used um, to cure cancer. Yeah. And the vax will cause cancer, probably other diseases too. Don't get me started on uh, started on the pokey poke. I'm so mad about it. Yeah. Yeah, Brett said I thought he was smarter than that. I was actually surprised he would say, even if he even if he believed it, he's him saying it, I think. Yeah. Um, can we revoke taking CBDC and stop it? I don't think so. I don't think there is a political solution to these problems, and I don't think that there's a way out. I think what we have to do is exit the system. We have to take the time that we have to build systems so we can sustain until we can rebuild or until we get through it. I don't see any way to stop this because it don't matter how you vote. Right. Because either you either you have to agree with me that when President Trump got in there, he didn't have the power to change things. Or you have to say he was in there and didn't change things. Either way, it's not going to be changed. It didn't work. Yeah. Carrie says, I went to the yoga retreat with a doctor who was on TikTok the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, if your heart doesn't explode. Starla says, the vaccines caused my leukemia. I'm convinced. Mm. Oh, Nitos. Read Nitos as well. You'll like this. Yep. It will cure all kinds of diseases because the people will be dead. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh oh yeah mo says bitcoin sixty eight thousand now yes it is yep i'm not getting in mo is i'm not getting in i'm not but yeah sixty eight thousand is pretty cool um can anyone say ai can make anyone say anything act anyway that's true and there's no way to know whether or not he really said that or not right it came out of his, but who knows, babe? That's so true, though. Who they have, knows? They have AI that yep. you, you're supposed to have like passwords for mm. your people so that when your mom calls mm. and needs a money sent for a tow truck, you're not just sending money to scammers mm. who have your mom's voice. Chris White, I um, thank you for this comment. Says the swamp's a lot deeper than he thought. He is not Superman. Well, he either has the power or he don't. Well, he's, why did he say he was going to do it? Then? You either have the power, either you can do it or you can't do it. I mean, I'm not bashing him again. As I, as I said before, I think that he did a lot of great things for our country. But at the end of the day, he couldn't get the swamp cleaned, either because he didn't want to or he couldn't. Change isn't coming, guys. Um, let me see here. So if they raise the rent and no one can afford, um, they will have empty houses and apartments and lots of homeless people. Or what they'll do is they'll have a lot of people on subsidies more dependent on the government. You know, because Biden in the State of the Union address, one of the things he said is that um, he's going to offer $400 a month to people who are struggling to pay their mortgage. It's just more dependency, more dependency, more dependency, more dependency until you can't do anything because you depend upon them for your food, for your rent, you know, for every your health care. Everything you do, you depend upon them. They just get their teeth deeper and deeper, deeper into you. No. Oh. Oh, where are we at here? We the people have the power. We need to act like it. 100 percent Yep. Chris says room for newcomers. I don't understand. One more rock said I've been a, oh sorry, one more rock. One more rock said I've been a huge Trump supporter. He has been one of them because of the V. Again, Trump did some wonderful things for the country, and I would rather have him over Biden a hundred times out of a hundred. Right. It ain't even close. It ain't even in the same league. Trump was a hundred times better president than Biden has been. But the fact of the matter, either he can drain the swamp or he didn't. Either he has the power or he didn't. And even all the greatest intentions in the world. And and let's say for the moment that Trump has those and he really is the pro-American. He really wants to fix it. The state, the deep state is so big, so powerful. He can't. Uh. The power don't lie in the hands of the president. He's got some swing on some things. Of course he does. He can't fix it. This is why I keep saying there is no political solution to the problems that we're having. 
Yeah, we saw Ronald Reagan AI short talking nonsense. I have a hard time even knowing what to believe anymore. Yep. Transference of wealth, Hakeshaw 54. The illegals will fill the house at taxpayers' expense. Transference of wealth. Yep. Illegal. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Illegals are now the newcomers. Oh, got it. Yep. Any which way you look at it, politicians are corrupt. Not a one is innocent. Now, this is an interesting article, or interesting perspective, Starla. You know, it's like saying that, um, and I have friends who believe this, that a police officer who follows an unconstitutional order is just as guilty as the law itself. You know, the politicians in that, I appreciate the ones that are in there fighting. And I am i don't know, I don't know any of them personally to say which ones are good, good or bad, but I just don't see any way out of this anymore. And I think what we have to do is we have to become way more community-based, we have to look within. We have to take responsibility for ourselves and create our own because they are not coming to help. I'm sorry, but they're just not. Anyway, guys, it's been two hours and five minutes. We're going to get out of here. But before we do, like we always do, B, you got any parting words you'd like to share with these fine folks? Yeah, I was, you know, with, all, with everything that's going around, everything that's going on in the world, it's easy to be, it's easy to experience uh, paralysis by an overanalyzing paralysis by analysis paralysis by analysis paralysis you can say by it. analysis that's what i was gonna say but skeletor was, no <laughs> you know and the days of analyzing things are over right yeah. so we need to put a stake in the ground and 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 do something you know drop the the ego system and mm -hmm. and create an ecosystem try oh, to, i like that try to you know do what it's time it's time we need to to do what we can i like how you said that drop the ego system and build an ecosystem you know the ego system is the pool in the backyard the ego system's keeping up with the jones the ego system is that need i want more i want more i want to do better than everybody else i want to do all of those things um, let's not be in competition with each other let's uh, encourage everybody and let's make sure we're all winning um along you know kind of along the way there is, as B said, you guys, there is no advantage to waiting anymore. They're, they are not fixing this. I'm telling you, there's no political solution. And there's nothing that's going to happen in November that's going to change everything. I'm telling you, there's not. And they're going to swing and take, you know, away or take a look at, you know, taking away your money. You have no say. You have no control in what goes on in the world. And uh, unfortunately, Trump is not coming to save you. You have to go save you. So do what B said. Put a friggin' stake in the ground. We love you guys. We'll see you guys next Friday. Bye, everybody. Yeah.